All right, now it's time for the Kevin and Nikki show on iHeartRadio. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's time for the Kevin and Nikki show. They gon' have it lit up. Yeah, you know. It's time for the Kevin and Nikki show. They got the airways poppin' every city across the globe. It's time for the Kevin and Nikki show. They gon' have it lit up. Yeah, you know. It's time for the Kevin and Nikki show. They got the airways poppin' every city across the globe. You know him as a dual actor, Kevin D. Bitten. 360 twice jam, how you keep winning? And you know the baddest actress, Nikki Warren. She so bad you walking past, she had you speaking for her. If you ain't tuning in, this your reality check. You might miss out on your favorite star celebrity guest. When they celebrate, what you do? You get the bell, yeah. Doing Kevin's corner, get expired and encouraged, yeah. Bend them corners, why you listen? But don't swerve. Find out what's getting on, Nikki nerd. What's bothering Nikki? What's bothering Nick Nick? What's bothering Nikki? What's bothering Nick Nick? Keep on playing, me and Kevin Goose, and we gon' get you hit. Yo, check us out on social media. In your mobile phone, we everywhere. You have the stations played out like a ringtone. Follow me, like Bino R.E.M.E. Why? Bino Remy. Pop like Sammy. And my flow hotter. Dick a semi, been doing this since I scraped up pennies, but back to the subject, Kevin Nicky. That intro never gets old, man. It's never like like Black Panther said, this never gets old. <laughs> it never gets old. This never gets old. <laughs> yes. Yeah, man. So we are back. We are back. We are back for another exciting show, another exciting episode on the Kevin and yes. Nikki show on Hallelujah. Our Radio. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm actor Kevin D. Ben. And I'm actress Nikki Warren. And we are back. We are back. Man. We are back. I'm telling you, we this got, week, we got a lot to talk about. this mm-hmm. weekend was awesome, so awesome, so it was just awesome, 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 man. Yeah. It was just awesome. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the best word, best way to describe it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and any adjectives that would be like, yeah, yeah, that was, yeah, that was, yeah. Any, yeah, any adjective and synonym mm-hmm. taking y'all back to school. Right? <laughs> An adjective described in a yes. synonym, synonym is, an, yes. is the same word, right? Yes. It's another way yes. of saying the same thing. Yes. So, yeah, yes. man. So, yes. Yes. So, yeah. So, uh, we always got a lot to talk about. We always have things on the horizon. We always have something up our sleeve for our yes, fans we do. and followers. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. So, yeah. So, listen, 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 yeah, listen, man. listen. Yeah, We man. are excited, excited, excited. Uh, that we have been one of, I want to say, 473. Man. Out of 473 podcasts. Listen, they chose 60. They chose 60. To be a part of. And guess who was amongst the 60? Drum roll, please. <laughs> the Kevin and Nikki show on iHeartRadio. So, yeah. Uh, the Philadelphia Podcast Society presents. Well, first, I want to say mark your calendars. Mark your calendar. Mark your calendar. Because like, it's going down. Listen. We're for bu- real. We're building this thing. I got to do it. What? I got to do it. What's that? I got to do it now. Because, listen, we are besides ourselves. It is going down. Yeah. It is going down, yeah. man. I'm telling you. Yeah, we're, we're building this It's going this down. It's going, it's going to be. It's going to be. Yes. It's, it's becoming bigger than we started Yes, out. it is. So, it started out yes, as just us being selected to be a part of the 
Philadelphia Podcast Society presents the seventh annual Philadelphia Podcast Festival. Mm-hmm. And then it started turning into some other stuff because of some uh, people we gonna have there. Yes. So uh so And just, people calling us up like, hey, we trying to come through. Right, 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 Man. right. We trying to fly in. Yeah, you we trying saying? to fly in for this thing. Like this it's thing like is it's, nice. it's turning out on that. It's gonna be fun. I don't know. I'm gonna need to take some sedatives and something for that weekend. It's just gonna be action packed. Absolutely. Yes. All right. So it's gonna be the seventh annual Philadelphia mm-hmm. Podcast Festival, July. 17th through the 28th, 2019, and the Kevin and Nikki show were broadcasting live at the Colonial Pen Life mm-hmm. Insurance Building on the third floor, mm-hmm. Indy Hall, room 360, 399 Market Street in downtown Philadelphia, PA 19181. It's going to be Saturday, July the 20th, 2019, and we'll be broadcasting at, at 1, one o'clock. o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Show up. Show up. All right. So, what we can give you so far is that our live in studio celebrity guest yes. is from HBO's The Wire. Yeah. Creed One. Yeah. Jason's Letter. Come on. Split. Come on. Black Lightning. Yes. CW's Black CW's Lightning. CW's Black Lightning. It's none other than multi award winning actor, yes. entrepreneur, Nakia, Nakia Dillard. Dillard. Yes. That's right. Yes. Now, check this out. We're going to have live special guest performances by celebrity mm-hmm, R&B mm-hmm. soul artist Terry Remsom, who we had on the show, and the one who did the intro for the Kevin and Nikki show that you just heard. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be celebrity rapper MC 936 Beano, a.k.a. Beano Cobb. Yes. Now, we yes. just... Should we tell them who the guest appearance or we should let them know? Let, no, not yet. Okay, not yet? Not okay. yet. All right, okay. We, so, yeah, we are... Solidif- we have solidified two... Celebrity special guests who yes. reached out to us yes. and said, "Look, we want to be a part of this, and we're gonna stop through." Yeah. So we will be telling you who these two special celebrity guests as are as we get closer. As we get closer, well, once we put the flyers out, yes. once we get them confirmed, we're we gonna put confirmed. the flyers out. Yeah. Yeah. So come out and see how we cut up in in the studio live, and it's gonna be fire. You're not gonna want to miss it. You're so, not gonna yeah. want to miss it. I'm telling you, because I'm telling you right now, you're not gonna want to miss Cab dancing. I'll tell you that right now, because that every song that come on, he got to get up, see and y'all gonna see all that. See how she lied. <laughs> y'all gonna tell see how she lied, lied. <laughs> y'all gonna see all that. Right, y'all right. gonna see all. Y'all gonna get a chance to see how he just gets up and start, you know, beep out it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I might get up and start dancing. You know what? If, when uh, depending on what song Terry sing and. Being no rat, I might get up and start dancing. Yeah, and encourage the crowd to get see, up dancing. See, I, I started off. Matter of fact, I might mess around and start the Soul Train line. Listen, I may pull somebody out the crowd. Like, come on, Man, y'all. Listen, we might have turned this into a party. We, we gonna have to real. turn this into a party. We it's might. Gonna be fun. We might. A Soul Train line just might happen. It just might. It just yeah, might. It might. So be prep. Be prepared. Be prepared. Be prepared. Anything can go. Anything might happen on the Kevin Nicky show. Who said that? Now, who, who said, said that? that? Be prepared. That's a lad, yeah. No, it's not. Oh, it's a lad? The Lion King. Oh, the Lion King. That's right. Lion. <laughs> the Lion I knew. King. I knew it was one of them Disney movies. <laughs> the yeah. Lion King. I was clue. I was clue. But listen, and for anybody out there uh, that have been a celebrity guest on the Kevin and Nikki show, we want to invite you to come out. Yeah, we will give you a shout out on we the sure air. Will. If we see you in the audience, we can promise you that. Is we gonna have? We're listen. We're gonna have some fun. It's gonna be fun. I'm telling you right now. Right. We're gonna have and then, so much fun. And then, you guys gotta come out and have fun with us. Yeah. I'm and then you. we are setting some things up. Yes. For our fans, followers, and friends. Yes. Later on that night. Later. On. And it's gonna be free. And it's gonna be. It's gonna be free. free. It's gonna be fun. Yes. It's gonna be food, fun, fun fellowship, fellowship, family, friends, and free. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Let me see you, how I can do it again. You added a six F in there. I did, I did. Wait, do it again. All right, it's going to be food, fun, family, friends. Fellowship. Fellowship. And, and free. free. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you want to go check it out. You don't want to come check it out. He's Look. so excited. Yeah, I'm excited, man. But no, we do what we do for you, and we can't do what we do without you. That's and right. Th- y'all That's guys right. motivate us to continue yes. on bringing you hot yes. shows and things like that. So some events will be coming up. We'll keep telling you about that. Um, the Recession Web Series, don't forget, was released on July 2nd on YouTube. Go to the Recession Web mm-hmm. Series YouTube channel and check it out. It's hot like fire. And uh, Nick, you had a chance to see my clip, man. 
I, I, told, I, I told you. It. I told I y'all it. wasn't gonna be. I loved it. I, I told y'all it. wasn't gonna be a fan favorite. I'm telling you, <laughs> a hot listen, a hot mess <laughs> always got something going on. I know, man. And it's never the right thing. You know, I, you know what? I'm gonna have to find a song to play for this one yeah. right here. But man, well, why does he have scandalous? Here's the thing. Scandalous. I saw. That's my, what it is. I saw my clip, and um, I saw my clip. Um, and why did they have to have the Friday the 13th music playing in the background? Because you They evil. got the Michael Myers music playing in the background. Because you're evil. Yeah, my character was And you evil. must be destroyed. Yeah, all right. Well. Hey, uh, scandalous. <laughs> a hot mess. Yeah. Him, him and the mayor. Uh-huh. Scheming. Well, that was, no, that was old here. I'm talking about the recession. Oh, the recession, man. Uh, yeah. Listen, I'm telling you, listen. Both and both of them. Yeah, I was. He's uh, a hot mess. But in the recession, recession? Yeah. be quiet. Okay. In the recession, he is a mess. But did y'all see how he slid across that desk to the girl? I'm like, what in the world is going all, all on? All up in her face, you know. What I'm saying? All up in her face, a hot mess. Yeah. All up in her face, and, and the girl was like, "What?" Yeah, yeah. She was, she was just, she was just rejecting me. But anyway, I got to give a shout out to the super talented multi award winning actress Mia Barnes. Yeah, she, she really she made it easy part. for me. She made she it. played that part. She played that yeah, part. She just um she really made it easy. She really, really made it easy for me. She 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 played she played that part. Yeah. She did her part with and her she, reactions was great. Her react but the way she kept with her eyes, that was funny as hell. Um, oh I said hell. Uh, Can I say hell? Well that's in the Bible. It's a <laughs> it's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. <laughs> hell and damn is in the Bible. There's another, but, then, but then there's an argument. Uh, there's another. There's another word in the Bible too. Hell, damn. Yeah, that's in the Bible. There's a, there's another word in the Bible too that everybody be talking about. But you know what? Then they got into the the, con, the argument of the type of context. It's the way that you use it, and da 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 da. So okay. Yeah. So I guess I can't say it then. Well, if you say it like it's used in the Bible, uh, like all y'all going to hell. That was no. Like, is that what? It, I didn't it's, think it said that. The other word is in the Bible. It's referring to like a donkey. Oh yeah, yeah. That other word well, yeah. starts with an A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> starts but that, with that an ain't A. the context in which we use. It. <laughs> we're not talking about no donkey when we starts use. Starts with an A. Or or uh, well well I'm I'm just saying okay. when you call somebody that word yeah. you are basically calling them a donkey. Right, right. And it's not a compliment. But how did we get off the subject? We were just because on... you started it. That's all right. We, so back to that's recession. how we got off the subject. So yeah, so um, yeah, I had to play a character. That I had to do some acting, man. I really yeah. did. I had to come, you know, because it was a you character. You had to be pulled out of your comfort zone. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And we know yeah. that in acting, we had to be comfortable with the mm-hmm. uncomfortability mm-hmm. of the scene. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so it was good. And then, of course, guys, we got Old Head Season 3, Episode 2 is on YouTube. Mm-hmm. You want to check it out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, you'll see me up to my slimy, no good ways. Slimy, as the- no good. Uh, city councilman Ben. Don't you know no good? And don't you know no good? Don't you know no good? Don't you know no good? No, no, no. Don't you know no good? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I, I think I think it's awesome when mm. when you are um pulled out of your comfort zone because I got pulled out of my comfort zone when I went to New York to do that film out there, The Right Path. Remember mm-hmm. that? I got pulled out of my comfort zone for that. So I th- I love doing it. I, I want to be pulled out of my comfort zone for some more. And remember when I had to pe- play the uh, parent who was schizophrenic right. a little bit. I played that. That was a little bit out of my comfort zone as you. well. So um, I don't. I don't mind it. I don't mind. I don't mind being challenged. I really don't. I think it's just. I think it's just awesome. So we got All Head season three, episode two is on YouTube. Go and check it out. Um, I think you're really, really going to enjoy. It. A lot of people are really enjoying it. They've been. Uh, I want to say waiting for this, you know, since, mm-hmm. since the last season, they've been really, really waiting for this and uh, go check it out. And I'm in a scene with my man, man, Nino, he plays the mayor and, uh, you know, my character is the character that uh, I love the kids. Mm-hmm. I hate mm-hmm. that they're being affected mm-hmm. uh, by the politics in the city. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, I'm a little, but dis- at the same I'm a little t- dishonest. At, yeah, yeah. At the same time, you got some dishonesty going I on. Do, too, I do. So. I do. I do. So it's like I want, I want them liquor licenses, man. Yeah, it's like you're being pulled in two different directions. Yeah. You know, in one minute you are all for the children, but in the other, man, it's about minute, money and liquor you, licenses. You, 
because the liquor licenses will bring businesses, right, you right. know, and you want that. So, but the way the mayor was talking to you was hilarious. That man was like, you want those liquor licenses? Right, 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 right. You know, and I <laughs> he got to. He did a fabulous job. He did. He did, yeah, he he did, did. a wonderful he, job he playing the mayor. And I can't wait to see how the story between the city councilman and the mayor, both corrupt as they are, play out. I can't wait to see right, that. Right, right, right. That's so, yeah, going to be man. awesome. And I got a little feedback because um, I posted the trailer mm-hmm. and uh, the episode on my Facebook wall. Yeah. And, you know, one of the greatest compliments uh, that we as actors can have is when someone says, hey, you guys were yeah, very believable. You were. were, you, were believable. you were. You were. Both of you. I mean, I was like, wow. I had to watch it a few times. It was so good. It was so good. Yeah. So I can't wait to see. So keep watching. But here's what you need to do, guys. You need to go on YouTube and you need to check out All Head episode season one all the way up to the current season so that you can get the story right, right. and the storyline and follow that all the way up to... um Season three, where we are now, I'm telling you, it's a dynamite story. Yeah. It really is. And I'm telling you, you're going to be like, yes, I want to see more of this crazy mayor. Yeah. And the city councilman, as corrupt as he is, I'm telling you, you're going to want to see more because it, it keeps you. And like I said before, I can see this on the HBO. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I, had someone, I can definitely see it on HBO. I had a friend contact me on uh, Twitter mm-hmm. and said, when I put the episode up there in the on trailer, Twitter, yeah. and they said, they the question they asked me, is this on HBO or Netflix? And that was yeah. a compliment yeah. that he saw the, the... I can definitely see it Yeah, there. he saw the value yeah. of it being on the HBO on the Netflix and um, you know, I responded told him that it was on YouTube and yeah, things like that I can definitely see yeah. it going there because it has that content to right. keep you you know I can definitely see that so shout out to all of the cast and crew of Old Head and the Recession Right, doing y'all thing over there that's right so um, the what what else we got oh so yeah I was um, on the set filming Pride, mm-hmm. yeah, the uh, urban crime drama that we're yes. in, playing James Pride, and yes. uh, I, uh, yeah, man, the scene went very, very well. Um, Mr. Evil Man, I'm Mr. Evil Man. Mr. I don't Evil care about, man. I don't care about nobody don't but care my about money, nobody but my money. But I do care well, about, you care about I care about you. I care about you your care character. About yeah. yeah. So I care about I you. I say that. You do yeah, care I do. About me. I'm, that's I'm, probably I'm, the only thing in the, the, in the, only one you care in the movie about. I care about. So yeah, yeah, that's it. Other than that, man, I'm just like a, just a ruthless, mm-hmm. callous mm-hmm. killer. Wow. And, uh, you know, if you're around me, you're just kind of lucky that you just can yeah. make it through the day without getting killed. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I, 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 like I said, I'm excited about this character. Mm-hmm. And uh, I felt like, you know, on an overall basis, of course, we are worse critics and we always want to critique ourselves and we want to get better and yeah. better every day. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I was when I was playing basketball. No matter what I achieve, I want to get better every day. But I felt like I pulled the character off. I know you did. I felt like I pulled it off. Because man. you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I know you did. You know what? Crazy. You know what? I mean, just like Mike was talking about, sometimes you got to tap into yes. that. I mean, I don't think I had to go as deep as Mike went with his character, but yeah, I had to tap into some anger. I had to tap into some frustration and, uh, you know, yeah. think unhappy thoughts. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're so crazy. We got to live in separate houses. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. Too much. Live how, in separate how, 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 how did you say in your script? It's just too much drama going too on. Too much there. drama. <laughs> yeah. So, nice, yeah. nice. I can't wait for my turn to film. So you film first, and yeah. then I'll be filming so- shortly. Shortly, you'll be filming shortly. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, it was very, very authentic. Um, it was very, very authentic, very, very believable to mm-hmm. see. So much so, you was kind of like, okay, this is real authentic. Yeah, now how, how did you bring yourself out of First of all, how did I bring myself out? How did you prepare to get into the character? Mm-hmm. And then how did you bring yourself out? I just started thinking about my job, and that just oh, made it so Lord. easy. It's like, oh, no, nah, nah, I'm just kidding. Lord. But no, I just had to, I thought about things that would bring about angry thoughts, unhappy mm-hmm, thoughts, mm-hmm. frustration, um, you know. Kind of like what you said, how would I think, feel, believe, or behave if I was in that situation? Yeah, yeah. And so I tried to, you know, reenact that. And then I tried the substitution. I tried the substitution uh, as far as thinking about something that would make me angry, and I transferred it into the scene. I think I pulled okay, it off. Okay. I think I pulled it off, man. I dropped a few F-bombs. Sorry, Mom and Dad. <laughs> now, how did you bring yourself out? Because with that okay. character... Yeah. 
that character is very dark and intense you yeah. know and it's and it's very intense so how did you bring yourself out of that well how i brought myself out of it and i'm and this is just honest i'm keeping it real it was the drive on my way to the 2019 okay. <laughs> Sisters <laughs> Choice Award, and your girl Nikki, actress yes. Nikki Warren, is the recipient yes. of the yes. 2019 yes. Sisters Choice Award. And I'm gonna yes. tell you, I was just thinking about trying to get there on time, yeah. and this monumental, um, you know, this monumental positive yeah. award that you were getting yeah. for your yeah. acting. Yeah. Being a radio host, your involvement in the community, empowering women yeah. and empowering our children and you. Yeah. And that 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 Aww. that helped me transition like that. It really, really you did. See that, y'all. It really, really did. You see that? Oh, and yeah. I, you know, and I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you guys so much. I mean, I cannot thank you guys enough. Mm -hmm. I mean, the way the way you came out and, you know, you voted for me and you kept voting and kept voting. Man, when they showed that purple yeah. line and they said that this person has collected, oh, I mean, what was it? 11, it over, over, over 11,000 votes. 11,000 yeah. votes. Yeah. And they showed the number. I was like, Jesus. And, and just to give you an idea Beautiful. of what the 11,000 votes meant to the entire yeah. scheme of voting, not bragging, but it was like, it was, it was like 80%. N Nikki got, um, it might've been close to 87% mm -hmm. of the votes. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it was just, it was just phenomenal. It actually, it was more now. It might've been more yeah. since, yeah, within yeah. that last stretch, but it was over 11,000 votes and, um, you know, we want to say um, congratulations to all the nominees, all the nominees, and things like yeah. that. And thank you to yeah. everybody who showed yes. out, thank showed you. up, and showed out, to, and took time. time to vote yeah. and vote and vote. And it, it you know, for, for from my perspective, it was a well deserved honor and the because food was good. oh, the food was great. Food Before was we get good. to the food, I got to say it was a well deserved mm -hmm. honor because mm -hmm. I see. What Nikki does. Yeah. I see what she does. I see how she grinds. I see how she helps people. Nobody doesn't see when, say, we're on our way to an audition and she's giving money to every poor person at every yeah. corner. And I'm yeah. trying to tell her, like, Nick, I don't think that one was poor. <laughs> He, you, you he know, sure does. Like, wait, I don't what think you that know. one. Maybe the one at the last corner was poor, but that you dude. You can't pick and choose. But I, but I always tell you, but I'm not going to stop you from getting yeah. I won't stand in the way. Yeah. I'll give you my opinion because yeah. he had a pair of better sneakers on than I did. You know what? You know what I'm saying? But then she gives, you know, nobody sees that. You know, she speaks to the kids about saying no to drugs. She's empowering women uh, with these young people, the uh, the young girls, and then with the acting, the radio show. So it was a, it was a well deserve honor and thank congratulations you. to actress Nikki yeah, Warren, the 2019 you, you. recipient of the Sister's, Sister's Choice, Choice Award. Thank you yeah, guys it was, it was dope. so much, yeah. so much, so much, so much. And then to the food. I mean, the whole event was phenomenal. Listen, it, it was phenomenal. That salmon, oh my yeah. goodness, that salmon was nice and juicy. Man, I might have six nice pieces. Nice and I might juicy. Have about, I had about, about two. I, I had, had three. I had three. How many did you have? I had about Six or seven. You have more than me. But I'm Because I went back for two plates. I can do, I can literally do the salmon, the stream beans, and the salad, the, the Caesar salad. I can do that like every day. Okay. So I, I had the salad, the string beans, the salmon, I had the chicken, I had the potatoes, and I had this baked ziti. Oh. So I had the works. He had I told you I got into acting for the food. So this was like, you know. I saw that salmon. I was like, hands this up. Was it. This was hands it. This was up. Part, of, part of why I got into this. Yes. Stuff, and and then the, the, the cake. <laughs> Just being honest. Okay. Oh, yeah. Then the cake. Yeah. The cake. And then it they had good. some little teeny some little teeny desserts in these teeny little uh, glasses. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's so pretty. It yeah. was so pretty. Yeah. The whole thing. The whole thing was great. I mean, yeah. the whole thing you know, was beautiful. we were on the red carpet. And I, I got invited into the interviews. Nikki... Invited me into the interview. Oh, I, I, no question. No, but here's the thing. What I was going to do was record it for you. No. But Nikki was like, no, you're no, coming on the red no, carpet no, no, and getting no. interviewed with me. No, you she, were, yeah. listen, you were on the red carpet. You the radio. were in all of the interviews. Yeah. 
the radio show. Yeah. Uh uh-uh, uh 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 uh. Yeah. There is no way I'm leaving you out. Yeah. No it, way, it was no great. Way, I, I no you know way. I was just happy to be there just to support. I came down just to support. You know, uh, straight from set. And uh, but Nikki invited me into all the festivities and things like that, which I was appreciative of. And it was just it was just a phenomenal. Mm-hmm. It was phenomenal to hear the testimonies and stories of women overcoming yeah. uh, cancer and oh, trial, sexual abuse. sexual abuse and all kinds of stuff you know, and standing up there in strength and strength. Yeah, and strength. it was great. It was you it know, was phenomenal. It was great. And it was shout phenomenal. out to Carolyn Wilson. Yes. And the sister's choice. Yes, yes, and yes. That whole and team. Melissa Morgan, honey. Yeah, oh, Melissa Morgan. Melissa Morgan. Changes. Okay. Love changes. Ooh, love, love changes. Love changes. That's what, what I got. That's what love is with you. <laughs> oh, y'all know that song. That's a classic. Change. Man. Man, we got a picture with her. Love will make you all so happy inside. Y'all know that song. She tore that song up. She get the bell. Get... Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we were able to get a picture with the legend. Oh, man. And uh, fingers crossed, toes and fingers crossed, prayers up. We're going to get her on the show. Yes, we are. And uh, her, her manager said we will be in touch. That's so right. So stay tuned. We're going to get the tuned. legend, Melissa Morgan, Morgan, on the Kevin and Nikki show. It's going down. She tore that. She, she, she closed it out. Yes. She closed it out and shut she it down. She closed it out and shut it down. I mean, even I was up there dancing. You sure were. I was up there dancing. You sure were. I don't know I what looked, I was I, doing, listen, but I was up there I went dancing. to the ladies' room and came back. He was gone. He I left your award on the he table. Left my award all on the table. I was like, I'm somebody like, could have okay. stole it. Feed you know? to the temple. I know, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was great. I was, yes. it, it was, I was thankful to be invited. It was great. It was professional. It was organized. It was structured. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was flawless, and it was so motivation. It was so much, so motivating, inspiring, yes. encouraging, yes. and empowering to see these great women recognized. And then they even recognized the men. They had a couple of men. Yes, up there. they did. And so they shout had out to three the men. Fabulous that, men. Yeah, yeah. And a young lady um, who the little girl, um, the little girl overcoming sickle cell anemia. Sickle cell anemia. Sickle cell anemia. It was sick, sick, sickle, sickle cell, cell anemia. anemia. Not lupus. Sickle she, cell anemia. She was like, I think she was like nine years old. Yes, she was she the was. youth ambassador mm-hmm. for like, I want to say the country. Yeah. And she yeah. was only nine years old. She was so cute. She got up there and read her little acceptance speech. It was it was phenomenal, man. But uh, Nick, as they say in basketball, I remember, like I said, my dad used to tell me, you got to step up and you got to stand out. Yes, you do. And the award you got today, this weekend... You stepped up and you stood out. Awesome. You stood out. You stood yes, out. Like you, 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 yeah, you, you stepped you. up and you stood out. Yes. It, was, it was well deserved. Yeah, man, congratulations. Thank you. So, Thank you, guys. Where's the bell? I got to give you the bell. You got to give me I the gotta bell. I got to give you the bell. Okay, I'm so going to pass this over. You get the bell. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, my goodness. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, it was great. Yes. So, uh, what? Oh, yeah. And we don't want to forget. Uh, Please go to our mm-hmm. Facebook show page mm-hmm. and the video of Nikki receiving her award is up. I was able to capture it on my phone and uh, go check it out. Um, yeah, it's, it's really, really nice. nice. Man. It's really, really nice. nice. So nice. go to our Facebook page, the Kevin and Nikki Show Facebook page. Actually, it's on our Twitter page. Mm-hmm. And, uh, if, you know, you want to check out the video of her receiving her 2019 Sister's Choice Award. You can check it out. And see the video. Check it out, y'all. Y'all, I think y'all going to dig it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we going to take a break? Yeah, uh, so we're going to take a break. But, but before, before we do, man. Listen, our special guest is a celebrity in his own right. Yes, he is. There's so many positive things I can say about this brother. He's my brother from another mother. And uh, man, listen, you guys are going to be excited about hearing his journey. He's a multi-award winning actor. Yes. And a whole lot more. A whole lot more. And he can bring it. And I'm telling you, uh, he when you see him on screen, yeah. you know you've seen him on screen. Yeah, we had the opportunity to be in we, some things. With yes, we had the opportunity to work with him. Yeah. And it's a 
a, just a pleasure, man, just to be able to say we know him. We're not going to tell you who he is. We're going to take a break, and then we come back. We're going to introduce our special guest. Yeah. It's the Kevin and Nikki Show on iHeartRadio. We're on iHeartRadio, and we all around the world. Do, 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 do. That means we global. We'll be right back. <laughs> we'll be back. Tooth with some tasty treats from the brownie shop. Fudge cupcakes, sweet potato pie, freshly baked bread, homemade ice cream, creamy chocolatey brownies, and much, much more. Check out their full menu on Facebook Brownie Shop or Brownie Shop 2019 Instagram. Get your next dessert from the brownie shop. Your sweet tooth will love you for it. Urban Elite Beauty Shop is an online urban beauty supply store that serves both men and women in the urban communities. Our goal is to offer a wide range of beauty supplies at wholesale prices that encourage consumer feedback and building lasting relationships. We will leverage the exploding trend of male home beauty solutions, i.e. male units, balding solutions, and much, much more. Go to www.urbanelitebeautyshop.com today. Check out what the urban experience is all about. Yes. All right. All right. Yes. I want to be, I want to be like Mike. Yeah. <laughs> like Mike. Yes. I want to be like Mike. I love that song. I love it. I love it. I love to it. To watch him act. 
is just like that, like Mike, because you know I could be like Mike. <laughs> to watch him act, you won't be bored. Okay. That's why he won multiple awards. <laughs> the dream I move. Now watch him groove like Mike. Okay, you gonna, you gonna pat that song? You gonna pat that song? Yeah, you get the sound for that. Okay, okay, you writing, you writing, you writing. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Read back, so go ahead, yes, introduce yes, our special guest. Yes, <laughs> listen, our special guest, he is a multi award winning best film and TV actor. He's a producer, he also does stunts, he's also in the casting department and a writer who has been in multiple award-winning films and who also was born in Brooklyn in the house, New uh-huh. York. And he began acting in 2013. Now, listen, he has a resume that is off the chart with over 80 IMDb credits and has performed in over 120 feature films, short films, TV shows, and web series and commercials. Now, listen, our special guest is hot like fire. Uh, yeah. Who are we talking about? Like We're Mike. talking about none other than Mike Sutter. <laughs> yeah. How you doing, Mike? I'm doing well. Wow, that's quite a build-up. I have a lot of <laughs> 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 That's quite a build-up. Yes. Yeah, man. Well, listen, man. We want to first say thank you, thank you, thank you so much, man, for taking time out of your busy schedule and coming on the show and sharing with us and our guests and uh, we just want to let you know how much we appreciate it. Yes. Well, well I'm happy to be here. And if I can uh, help someone who's on the same path that I was on, do things better and more efficiently and learn from what I've learned, I'm happy to share that. Nice. Awesome. 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 Well, listen, thank you so much for coming on. And we're just going to jump right, right on, on in. into it. Now, according All to. Right, let's go on the deep end. <laughs> now, according to my, my read up, you got started. You began acting in 2013. Tell our listeners a little bit about that. So um, I was reading an article in uh, Philadelphia magazine, and it was talking about this movie called Paranoia that was filming in Philadelphia. And how the uh, the economic benefit uh, to the city with the, the catering and the hotels and the, the travel and all the positive things that come along with making a movie in the area. Mm-hmm. And at the very end of the article, it uh, talked about, uh, well, if you've ever wanted to be in a movie, they need fresh faces for extra or background work. Okay. And I thought, wow, that, I've always wanted to be how a movie's made, so... That would be kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. So nice. I, I decided, well, I'm going to see if they want me to be in a movie as an extra, and that would be a lot of fun. The movie had Harrison Ford in it. It had uh, uh, Liam Hemsworth wow. and uh, Gary, Gary Oldman. And I'm like, wow, that, that's very cool. Nice. Wow. So nice. I threw my hat in the ring, and uh, uh, Harry was uh, casting the uh, extras for the production, and I sent my information, they called me down, and I uh, went on the set, and the first day on set, they told me, they grabbed me out of the folding, and they put me on the set, and they told me to stand here, and I stood there for like five or ten minutes, and then some guy walks up about five feet to the right of me, and it's Harrison Ford. Wow. Wow. Man. I, I, my, jaw, my jaw dropped, and my eyes widened, and I'm sure I looked like I was totally starstruck, because I was. Uh. And... Uh, he kind of looked over at me, gave me a head nod, and I quickly said, close your mouth and stop staring and look away. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I got you, man. Uh, all I could think about is, oh, my God, that's Indiana Jones. Right. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's Jack Ryan. I, I mean, I was totally starstruck for someone of my age to see him. You know, he was the man for, I don't know, 15, 20 years. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So nice. I, I just thought, wow, what a cool life experience. Yeah, nice. absolutely. Nice. See how we're going to start it. Absolutely. Now, you know what, Mike, I can attest to that, um, you know, having building, you know, building up my resume and gaining mm-hmm. acting experience. Mm-hmm. I'm still st- starstruck. Yeah. I mean, it, I, there's still a level of fascination to this acting journey so much so that you never know who you're going to meet, run into, shake hands with, yeah. take pictures yeah, with. Yeah, yeah. And so even to this very day, you know. I, I still experience that same thing, you yeah, know, and, yeah. and as much as you try to, 
you know, hold it back on and hold it all together, you know, there's still that element of being starstruck. It, it is, it is. Because <laughs> you know? I remember when I was on the set, I can't say the name of the movie because it's still in production. Mm -hmm. And um, I, re I walked, I was coming on set and I had come on right at the time for lunch. Okay. And I'm sitting there getting my food because I was playing the EMT. Okay. I'm getting my food and who walks directly to my face? Mm -hmm. Candyman. Tony Todd. Tony Todd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was I, I froze. I was yeah. like, oh my God. And the first thing he said to me like, what you doing? Uh, <laughs> I said, what you doing? He said, what you doing? Yeah, absolutely. That's answer. And you know what, Mike? It's it's been it's been history yes, ever since, man. Yes. Your, your resume is off the charts. It sure is. And uh, man, you've been in some. You've been in some uh, major uh, productions. Uh, House of Cards. Mm -hmm. uh, we were in Mercy together. Mm -hmm. uh, the newly released uh, Betrayed. Who do you trust? Which was a multi yeah. film, multi award winning film. Uh, Who killed Jane Doe? Boston and Philly, which was a multi multi award winning yes, film. Yes. Um, but. I mean, it's been history, man. And three so, days. Three days. Yeah. yeah, we had three days, and we got the big distribution deal with that. Mm -hmm. And so, shout out to Prime and uh, Christina, Christina Ponte. Yes. So, my my thing is, how does it feel, man, to be a part of these multi award winning mm -hmm. films, mm -hmm. and knowing that you had a big deal to do with it? Well, I mean, it's it's fun. I mean, you get to the reason. Yeah, I was on Wall Street for twenty years prior to. To, uh, coming over to acting accidentally. Uh, I, I mean, I was actually doing background, and I'm one of the uh, 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 a New York uh, uh, TV show. Okay. And someone approached me, and they said, "Hey, we need a uh, an actor for this weekend. You would be perfect." I'm like, "Well, I'm not an actor. I just kind of do this because I think it's interesting." Mm -hmm. And they said, "Well, we need somebody. You would be perfect. It's four lines. You want to do it or not?" I thought to myself, well, if they need someone else to help them out and see how it feels. And that's actually how I started doing speaking roles. And since I had such a fun time with it, um, uh, I'm being on set and being part of the process. Then I decided, well, I'll do more of it. Yeah. And, nice. Uh, that's kind of how I started acting. Um, mm -hmm. But to me, uh, you know, you mentioned being part of these films. You, you meet really different and interesting creative type people, which was very different from what I had in my prior life and kind of pulling together, uh, you know, on a shoestring budget to try to put something together, some kind of quality and, uh, you know, all pulling the rope the same way and, and, uh, you know, all doing your part. I just think it's really rewarding to be a part of something. Yeah. And when someone else uh, can appreciate it, uh, and think, you know, you've done good work and, uh, you know, the challenges that come with this between weather and locations and schedules, mm -hmm. it's, it's really tough to make even a short film. And so, right, right. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. When you can all celebrate that accomplishment together, it's a wonderful thing. Yeah, absolutely. Nice, absolutely. nice, absolutely. nice, nice. Well, well before, before Nikki says something, I just want to let you know, uh, you know, we were in, you were in, I was in, I'm going to say I was in, it was my first movie, mm -hmm. Misfits. I was in it oh, with okay, Mike. Okay, okay, okay. And okay. I just want to let you know, I appreciated your performance. It was great. Uh, you know, you played one of the hostages that had to go open up the safe. And mm -hmm. man, you crushed it. And that was my first role. I didn't have no lines. Mm -hmm. I just got knocked out. Like the main character played by Jason A. Drago comes okay. up to rob the casino and just punches me right in the face and knocks me out. And that was it for me. And I you was stay taking hits. I man. stayed taking some hits, you but I was happy with hits. that. You know, but Mike was over there crushing it. Had yes. to go back to your one about 12 times and crushed it nice. all 12 times, man. So you talk about nice. just letting somebody know that they appreciate your work, man. I appreciate your work. Nice. So you, you got say? punched in your face. I got, punched in, I got punched in my face 12 times. <laughs> yes. So Mike, getting, getting back to you, when the, when the film has wrapped and you know, everything is, is, taken care of and then it's time for the premiere what goes through your mind when you're at the premiere and you see your face up on the big screen what what are your thoughts well my first thought is i just hope that the, it came together like uh the people that are involved wanted it to you mm -hmm. know the, the people that produced it wrote it and, and shot it and edited it i mean uh, you, you just want to hope that, uh, that they did a good job and that you're going to be proud of the work that uh, uh, not only that you put in, but that everybody put in. Because it's not just about you. It's about the, you know, the whole piece. And mm -hmm, if, mm -hmm. if you're part of a quality production, then, then you can have some pride in that. So 
Yeah. Uh, yes, you, you know, as actors, you pick apart your performance and you see something, oh, I wish I'd have done that a little differently or a little better. But then you learn from it. And um, every role that you do, whether you feel like you did a good job in it or a poor job in it, there's a learning experience mm-hmm. there. So mm-hmm. uh, I just find the more work that I put into something, the better the result. So I can nice. work really hard on uh, giving people a good performance and control the part of the production that I can control, right. which in the grand scheme is a very small thing a lot of times. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Both now. Awesome. awesome. That's awesome. Now, how do you, how do you prepare for your characters? Like what is your process? So I go to the uh, actor's lab in White, Pennsylvania and I study with Brian Fox and I've been doing so for about a little over four years. Okay. And, uh, I'm really surrounded by some really uh, talented and experienced and uh, uh, wonderful people that all are working very hard on uh, perfecting their acting craft. And my first step is, uh, you know, I try to go over and over the material as much and understand the character as much as I possibly can, Mm -hmm. uh, understand their mindset, their history, uh, uh, just try to get as much feeling for the character as I possibly can, and then go over the lines as many times as I can till I feel like it's part of me and there I'm not go. acting it. Uh, mm, there's awesome. a statement, D- don't get caught acting. Right, right. Yeah, that's right. Kind of, yeah. Uh, that's good advice, Mike. That yeah. Listen, guys, did y'all just hear what he said? He said, don't, don't get, get caught, caught acting. acting. Now, that's if you're right. an actor and you found that, uh, I want to say an oxymoron or confusing to hear, you what we learn in acting class that acting is not acting; it's being the best believable yes, you. Absolutely, that's absolutely. good. That's, that's good advice, Mike. I think that the, the the mistake that most newer actors make, especially in TV and film, and also especially if they've come from the theater background, where you have to really project and play to the back row, is that TV and film acting is very subtle. Right. And when your head is you know fifteen feet high on the screen just looking up or not blinking in particular uh, is something that can create a very uh, dramatic and, and big uh, presence on the screen that you have to learn to control. Mm-hmm. And more times mm-hmm. than not, it, doing left is really what the most difficult thing about acting because you have a room full of uh, you know 15 people that are all focused on you and there's a certain amount of adrenaline and energy that goes through your body and controlling that uh, by controlling your instrument, not blinking too much or doing too much or uh, having, uh, you know, your voice be too loud. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. The things that beginning actors have the most difficulty controlling. And that's where I think, uh, you know, practicing it and, and working on those things as part of the craft is so, so important. Mm-hmm. Nice. Good. Nice. Good. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. So uh, you won a Best, fact, uh, Best Actor Award for feature film host of Sparrows, and it's about an ex-con who plans to retire to Florida uh, with a fortune that, you know, stolen money uh, way late after his former ball coaxes him uh, to a remote bed and breakfast to protect the daughter he never met. And then the storm traps him, uh, six others at a and b event turned deadly. The seven seemingly strangers discovered that their lives are all connected by a tragic murder from 11 years earlier. This was a very, very intense uh, character that you played. Talk about the character that you played and how did you, you know, prepare for such an intense mm-hmm. character? So the, the character uh, he, uh, uh, stole three hundred thousand dollars in money, but the mastermind of the uh, the the, the uh, break in wants his cut after my character gets out of jail after thirteen years, mm-hmm. and my character basically tells him no. You know, you can't have it. I did 13 years and I didn't sell you out, so I'm keeping all the money. Ooh. So when that occurs, he tries to set up this elaborate plot where he draws a bunch of people to a remote cabin, uh, B&B in the woods owned by my mother, and he also draws the daughter that doesn't know I'm her father to that uh, uh, bed and breakfast. Wow. And it's nice. very similar to the uh, Tarantino movie, The Hateful Eight, where there's a bunch of people trapped in a location and no one knows what each other's allegiances are. And uh, it, it, it was written by this uh, guy named Kevin Boone. And Kevin is a film writing instructor at uh, Penn State. Wow. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was a really great script. And what drew it to me is that this Irish uh, mobster, he was the second generation 
uh, Irish American, and I am as well. My mom came over on the boat, so I identified with them. They needed someone that could do an Irish accent, which I can't. And uh, it uh, was someone of my age and my physicality, and so it was such a great fit. And I was like, this, you know how Kevin, I'm sure you know, there's some roles that are just like, man, I need this one. Yeah, I can really, I can do mm-hmm. this role, and you mm-hmm. want it a little too bad. Right, right. Uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of how I felt about this one. So, um, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the fact that we were able to bring it together and uh, people appreciated my work, I was very thankful for because I, I felt about the production I felt it came together really well on a you know again a limited budget I think we probably spent $25,000 on the film oh wow and uh, it's, it's now it's on uh, Amazon Prime so if anybody w- would like to see it if you're an Amazon Prime uh, a subscriber you can watch it for free nice and uh, it's uh, it's it's doing pretty well and so we're it's finished its festival run and we won a number of awards uh, for the film and a number of cast uh, members as well as the cinematography which uh, Ed Kester who filmed it I think is brilliant I mean he's one, he's one of the best cinematographers I've worked with mm-hmm. uh, so I just felt really good about the people and the production and what we got out of it it was very rewarding because of that Wow. Nice, That's nice, good stuff. nice. Good stuff. Now you are also in three days. You played Doctor Antonio Reynolds. Tell our listeners a little bit about that character. Uh, so this is uh, a production that, that Kevin knows well. Um, so it's uh, Prime Hernandez and Christina Ponte uh, are is the executive producer and also starring in it. And it's uh, a very uh, supernatural thriller about. Uh, uh, the apocalypse, and it has uh, lots of religious overtones, mm-hmm. and it's based on a story that uh, uh, Prime's mother told him as a child, and uh, it's definitely a passion project for him uh, for getting this story out there, and Prime's a really talented writer, and uh, we had a great cast that came together for it, so uh, it's in post-production, and hopefully we'll know more about that at the end of the year maybe you know more than i do about it kevin <laughs> yeah because kevin you what's your character name i play uh ed hughes the guns the gun seller i'll be gun selling seller, guns yeah. under the table you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah, yeah and my character is a uh, lily davis lily and davis. i'm one of the uh you, doctors in there yeah you want to like you the one that's saying Look, I'm about to get the hell out of here. <laughs> as soon as you hear some ghosts, I'm about Listen, to get out of here. <laughs> li- I'm telling you right now, Lily don't play. Right, that's right. Okay, Lily does not play. Lily don't want to hear no noises, no nothing. Lily be trying to be out. That's right, that's right. For real. It was yeah, it was man. fun shooting yeah, that. It, it really was fun. Was. It, it was really, fun. really was. And um, like you said, uh, Prime and Christina are very, very talented. And uh, of course, man, we were you know grateful and thankful to be a part of it. Mm-hmm. We got the big distribution deal, yes. and uh, we're just waiting to see what the finished product is going to be. Yeah, man. I and can't wait to see very, it. Very, very super talented yeah. cast, and uh, so it's just great, man. Yeah, just great. So, so and, and Prime's always working, man. He's one of the hardest working. Yes, he, yeah, is. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. Yes, he is. And you know what? He's he, yeah. Go ahead. He's I'm sorry. Absolutely right. Like he got like eleven scripts. Like that he wrote eleven years ago. Yeah, he does. That he's just right, kind of waiting right. to film. <laughs> yeah, he he's, right, right. He's, he got it going on. Yeah, he he do. does. He do. And yeah. when you don't hear from him, you know he is he in the lab. Working. When you don't he hear from lab. him, he's in the lab. Yeah. Like he's like it's, there's no days off for Prime and, and Christina. We, yeah, yeah. Ab- absolutely. So, Mike, let me ask you this: So, when you uh, consider your acting style. You know, you have method acting. You have my yeah, yeah, yeah. What would you say is your acting style, or ha- or has influenced your acting style when you approach, you know, acting and characters? Well, I, I would tell you that I try to uh, take a little bit from everything. Okay. Uh, I, I don't think there's only one acting style that is necessary to uh, help you. Uh, get into character Mm -hmm. Uh, I think there are different things based on the characters and just based how you are as a person Mm -hmm. like if I play an angry character maybe Meisner is better for me okay okay for that character okay if it's a more uh, dramatic role maybe uh, Stanislavski's methods have more relevance to me okay Uh, okay so I I don't I don't use only one I try to draw from different different Mm. uh, disciplines Okay. And okay. Find out what what in a particular circumstance for a particular character mm-hmm, will mm-hmm. 
get me the best result. Uh, and all of them have redeeming uh, uh, virtues about them, so uh, I don't subscribe to one. I try to take from all of them and see what uh, uh, works for me in a particular role. Okay, Man, okay. That, that was a therapeutic. Yeah, episode. because you know that some actors a, focus on one acting a, style. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, that that was very therapeutic, and I'm gonna tell you why because. Like even in psychology, when they talk about therapy and counseling styles, they, there are different counseling styles and different therapy mm-hmm. me- methods. Yeah. And basically what you have to do for each individual person mm-hmm. is pick the combination of counseling yeah. styles yeah. and therapy methods that's conducive for that particular yeah. person. Yeah. So as he was explaining that, you know, my, my, my psychology degree jumped in. Okay. I said, that sounds familiar. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that was, that, that's it. But that's a, Mike is a true professional, man. True yeah. professional. I love, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And, and then you played in, um, Boston to Philly. Oh, you yeah. were the mayor of Philadelphia. Now here's the thing. Uh, we got a crooked mayor. <laughs> I play okay. the crooked mayor and <laughs> we, we got a crooked mayor going on. <laughs> yeah. So, were you crooked when you played the mayor of Philadelphia? So, in that role, uh, I was a newly erect, uh, elected uh, mayor of Philadelphia. And you know how politicians are. And so, what I've kind of channeled in my mind is that for me, it was all about getting the job. Mm-hmm. Uh, and now I have to see well, what it is that, uh, you know, I have to say to the people to uh, kind of placate them. Right, right, and there right. Was some very real, there were some very real problems in the city of Philadelphia, especially as it related to education and gentrification of uh, certain areas, which are very real problems in the Philadelphia mm-hmm, market. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. there are people uh, who wanted answers about those things. And as a newly elected politician, uh, I kind of thought, well, I had my own perspective on it, but uh, I had a mob of angry uh, reporters shouting stuff at me and some uh, young men who had very strong feelings about uh, a couple of particular issues. And mm-hmm, they, mm-hmm. Uh, they wanted to make the position known, and they kind of uh, shouted me down to a point where I had to pay attention to them. <laughs> wow. Out of my role in the film. Awesome. Nice. Awesome. That's crazy. Awesome. That's, That's right. crazy. And yeah, and Boston and Philly won so many awards um, for the for the film. It was just multi multi award winning yeah. film. Yeah. And everybody did such a great job in, in it as well. Now, Mike, I want to ask too. Um, every now and then, as actors, we'll have to play a character that um, can cause us to delve deep mm-hmm. into. Um, I want to say like. Say if you had to play like a murderer or like a rapist or something like that. Sometimes we had to play characters that cause us to delve mm-hmm. deep yeah, into yeah, yeah, people yeah, yeah, who yeah, we yeah. aren't. So, you know, have you ever, two twofold question, have you ever played a character that was on the level of like a rapist or a murderer? And how did you, you not being that person in real life, get prepared for that? And how did you de-escalate? How did you come down from it? to come out of those thoughts and emotions Mm -hmm. once it was a rant? So the answer to your question is yes, I have. Probably more times than I I would have liked. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. Uh, I I did a film with uh, Tom Smith and and Drew Pizzo, uh, who a lot of people know from Sick and Twisted Mm -hmm. uh, Productions. They tend to do horror films called Hunting for Justice. Mm -hmm. And I was sociopath in that one and uh, basically I had no feelings about anybody but myself Uh, that role was not as difficult to play as the one I did for uh, Frank Harr who's another local uh, Philly filmmaker and I played a role uh, uh, in the uh, the lead role of um, uh, a killer and the ambitious man Mm -hmm, and my mm -hmm. character was actually based on Jeffrey Dahmer, who, as many people know, was the serial killer who not only uh, killed uh, people, but then he would uh, eat them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and, and this particular character not only killed adults, but he also killed children. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. So many people might not know this, but uh, Frank Harr is a trained uh, clinical psychologist. Okay. And in preparation for, preparation for this role, he wrote me a seven-page backstory about why I'm a serial killer. And it had to do with, like, torturing animals while I was a kid and 
my dissociative behavior with other people and how I was teased by other kids and what drove me to this to mm-hmm. be this uh, monster of a human being. And I got to tell you, when I was reading those lines, and as you know, as actors, you guys know that you have to kind of like think the thoughts of the character right, to really right. make it right. um, authentic and real and organic. Right. And I got to tell you, the weeks leading up to doing that role for Frank uh, and that production were really disturbing. I was having terrible dreams. I was feeling awful physically carrying those thoughts around with me in preparation mm-hmm. for that role was one of the most difficult things I've ever done. And honestly, I've received, based on that uh, production and people seeing me do it, I've received some other offers to do similar type roles. Mm-hmm, I'm trying to mm-hmm. down because I, I just don't want to do that anymore. I it got was you. just too physically and emotionally taxing on me. Wow. Man, you know what, Mike? I really, I really wow. appreciate that, man. Wow. I really appreciate that, that knowledge, that information. Well, first of all, your professional approach to it. Because, I mean, what you're telling us is the work that goes in, like, you know, barring the character, you're talking about the work that goes into learning the backstory, mm-hmm, the thoughts and mm-hmm, emotions mm-hmm. of a character, you know, and this particular character has to be, ha- happens to be, you know, a uh, sociopath, murder, yeah, and things like yeah, that, yeah. making it very, very di- difficult. Yeah, yeah. And that was going to lead me to my next, my next um, mm-hmm. comment slash question. You know, as actors, we do become emotionally invested because we're still human. Right. And so that's why I wanted to ask, you know, that last portion, you know, do you listen to music to come out of that? Do you, uh, I don't know, some people watch SpongeBob. Yeah, or, some people you know, take a long drive. They take a or long drive like or go on a vacation. And so what was your method of kind of saying, okay, it's a wrap, it's over, I got to come out of this, you know, in your technique mm-hmm, or what worked mm-hmm, for you? Mm-hmm. For me, it's exercise. Okay. Uh, okay. Gym, or if I, I play volleyball and, and sometimes I golf, that's the kind of like the uh, break that uh, creates it for me. If I can just see, like physically exert myself, okay, uh, then it kind of what kind of washes out of my body a little mm-hmm. bit. Uh, mm-hmm. so, nice uh, music. I, I actually listen to music when I work out too, so that might have a, a piece of it as well. But mm-hmm. uh, just physical activity, you know, really exerting myself, uh, either volleyball or in the gym. That kind of does a reset for me and rebalances uh, my kind of emotional and physical perspective after doing something that's really, really challenging like that. Okay, yeah. nice. That's that that is that's that is good. Yeah, because I like to listen to music. Yeah, yeah. What do you do, Kay? Um, I like to work out. I go jog, okay. listen to music, yeah. play basketball. Uh, just trying to do things that I enjoy that can put me in an enjoyable mindset. You yeah, kind of come out. Yeah. you know. So yeah, yeah. I, I like to listen to upbeat maybe like inspirational okay. music to draw that, that and you, character and you know what this is this is this down. is very important man this is very important you know for for us who take acting seriously from a professional standpoint mm-hmm. that we need to have these techniques in mind mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know mm-hmm. um you know how we're going to approach a character prepare yeah, for yeah, it yeah, yeah, but yeah. then how are we going to come out how of it so that we can out of it. you know you know yeah. come back to ourselves so to speak so this is some very yeah. key golden nuggets yeah because remember we talked about that actor who never came out of character Steven Seagal yeah Steve, yes, yeah, <laughs> never yeah. came out yeah so yeah man Steven Seagal <laughs> man they, they said that uh, he was <laughs> Like kind of always in character, even at home. Yeah, you know he, you know he, he you know his wife be like, he, he, she be like, honey, I'm home. I'll break your leg. <laughs> <laughs> you know he, he couldn't come out of character. <laughs> she was like, I gotta get out of here, man. <laughs> That's a shame, Mike. So what's next for you? What's next? What you, what else you got going on? Uh, so uh, I got a couple of uh, projects that I have NDAs on that I can't uh, really. Right. Right, right. Uh, something, something I can talk about is that um, uh, uh, I've been working and uh, I'm uh, writing and producing and uh, acting in a new TV pilot with a bunch of my friends from the Actors Lab. Nice. Okay, cool. Nice. That's what's up. Nice. Uh, awesome. Only single in the suburbs, and it's oh. about uh, uh, people that are uh, basically. Uh, going on their second uh, relationship after divorce, uh, typically people that are uh, over 35 or 40, mm-hmm. and rediscovering dating and how awkward it is and texting and online dating and 
meetups and uh, the strange and funny things that happen on their way to their next relationship. So, wow. Uh, we've been filming and shooting that project. Uh, we uh, intend on submitting it to uh, TV film festivals. Yeah. Uh, our pilot. And uh, we're hopeful that it may land on a, a Hulu and Netflix. Oh, and that's awesome. That would be awesome. Be picked up uh, uh, by somebody to uh, develop into a TV series. There mm-hmm. you go. That that's sounds awesome. like a plan, man. That sounds I mean, good. Yeah, man. I mean, you're, you're a best film actor, film and TV, producer. You even do stunts. You write, direct, you mm-hmm, do all of that. Mm-hmm. So you're multi talented, man. And I also wanted to thank you that you recommended me for the short film, The Thread. I played the Grim Reaper, and I remember, uh, you know, you uh, reached out to me on Facebook and said, Hey, well, how would you like to be a part of this uh, Drexel student film? Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm, I was just kind of mm-hmm. getting started, and, was, and they gave me one line, and that was it. And I was yeah, so happy yeah, yeah. with that one line, man. And I just want, I, I'm just glad now I get the chance to. You know, uh, publicly thank you for recommending me, man. And I, I hope I made you look good. <laughs> uh, man, that film is what, that's also won some uh, awards as well, that film. So, oh, wow. Uh, yeah, it, yeah, it has. It's done pretty well at some of the film festivals. Nice. Great. Kelly, that is awesome. That is awesome. I can't remember, but Kelly uh, uh, is uh, contacted me a number of times and let, her, let us know that we've gotten a couple film festivals and won a couple awards. So, wow. Uh, nice. Kelly, Yeah, oh my yeah. Gosh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you. I, I mean, shout out to those Drexel student films mm-hmm. uh, and their Temple, film production, student Temple. Film. Yeah. Uh, I know John O. Faherty was the director of Misfits. That was, I mean, that film was globe trotting and winning awards all over the place. So. Uh, I would say to any actors out there, especially those who are trying to get their feet wet, uh, you know, you definitely want to take a professional approach to it and, you know, be prepared and hone your craft and develop your resume and headshots. But if you get a chance to be in a student film, Drexel Temple, you really want to take advantage of it. It's a great experience and they're great people. They're just such great people that you would love mm-hmm, to enjoy mm-hmm, being mm-hmm, around. Mm-hmm. It was, and it was one of the greatest experiences I had on set with uh, with with a cast and crew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they really take care of you too. Yeah, awesome. Uh, I, I would tell you, that, you know, those Drexel kids. Like, if you do their sophomore project, by the time they're you're se- they're seniors, they want to get you involved in those projects. Yeah, and that's happened to me quite a few times, and and I've always loved working with the kids and and uh, see them grow and. Uh, be a part of the project and it's a great opportunity for newer actors yeah. to be on a professional set because as you know they run those as professional sets they sure so do they have 15 people on there with grips and lighting and uh, the camera and, the, and directing and second AD and, yeah you know, they got it down yeah they, they sure they, do uh, they're, they're they work. They're good kids. Yeah, they sure do. It's very professional, and they have top of the line equipment too. Mm-hmm. And, they and sure one, do. And one, yeah, and they one of the sure things do. I love about the Drexel student films and the Temple, they support one of. They all they come do. together. Yes, they do. It's like you know, it's like okay, who's filming? What next? All of us are there. Okay, who's filming? Mm-hmm. What next? All of us are there. They support each other, and it's just great. And they put out good like products. Yeah, they that, do. Are, that are that are winning they awards do. and. And things like that. So that's just awesome. That's just awesome. It's a, it's a great way for newer actors to get some clips. Uh, yeah. To build a reel. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, you newer actors out there, jump on those opportunities when you can. Yep. Yeah, awesome. absolutely. Awesome. Yeah, you've done a few, and I've done I, a few. I, I, yes, and I'm absolutely. Gonna do, we're going to do a few more. We'll do a few <laughs> yeah. more, because they are some professional students, yes. Absolutely. Well, Mike, listen, man, we want to thank you, thank you, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. Yes. You've been an awesome guest. You've taken us to school. Yes. You know, he was like that professor that was just, just kind of talked in one tone. You know okay. what I mean? <laughs> didn't get excited, didn't get didn't get too low, didn't get too high, but just took it to school yes. and, and just taught the taught the lesson, man. And uh I know that we, we got something out of it, and I know our listeners did, too. And uh, before you leave, man, we're going to give you the opportunity, if you want, to put your social media out there, how people can find you, if they want to book you. You know, this is your opportunity, man, if you want to do so. Oh, well, I'm, I'm on Facebook. If people want to look me up, that's the best way to contact me. It seems like that's one of the strongest ways to uh, connect with people in the TV and film market in the Philadelphia area. So uh, anybody that's interested, that's the best way 
to reach me. I don't have a web page. Uh, I, I, uh, I kind of do word of mouth and referrals for most of the work that I've done. So yeah. uh, my advice to other people is just, uh, you know, come to set, be prepared, be professional, do your job, and then people will find you. That's you right. Know? That's right. right. That's right. And that's Mr. Mike Sutton, professional actor, man. You heard it first here on the Kevin and Nikki show, straight from the horse's source, as they say. So, yeah, man. So, continue success and, and blessings to you, man. Yes. And uh, we definitely got to have you back to talk about those uh, projects that you can't talk about right now. Yes. But, uh, and guys, check out his IMDb page. It is sick, it is off the chart. And uh, he got more than that. That's the thing. That, mm-hmm, and that, that's not mm-hmm. all stuff that's listed. But uh, yeah, I mean, he's definitely a model uh, of someone that you want to emulate. You heard the information that he was given, and it, it, it could be critical to your, you know, your success. Uh, Want to become an actor? If you that's really right. Do this. Awesome. That's it. Awesome. But yeah. well, thank you so much for coming on our show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Guys, and I'll come back anytime you'd like. Yeah, awesome. most definitely. Most, most definitely. definitely. All right, take care, Mike. Take care, Mike. Take care, man. Best guys. All yeah. right, bye. Man, wasn't he awesome? Awesome. He was giving out some I, good I'm advice. You, man. He I'm really was. He That's was giving right out there. some good listen, advice. Listen, if you didn't walk away having learned something, you wasn't paying attention. You, wasn't you don't have blood. Attention. You don't have blood running in your veins. That's right. You know what I'm saying? You didn't he have was blood. Fabulous. Yeah. Fabulous. <laughs> He can get the bell. He got to get the bell. <laughs> yes. That was, his, that was great, you man. You know, his professionalism and that, his approach man, to listen, acting. I love it. Listen, man. It's, I love it's, it. it's, you know, one of the things I appreciate so much is what each and every one of our individual mm-hmm. guests bring to the table. Right. And it was, you, you just kind of remind me of like that college professor, man, that's just teaching that class. Yeah. You know, teaching that class. I can see class. him teaching class. Oh yeah, most definitely. I can definitely most see definitely. him teaching class. Most definitely. And, and I'm going to I'm gonna put it to you like this. I would go. Yeah, I would I definitely, definitely would go. Sign up. And I like the fact that he don't focus on just one acting style. Yeah. You know, yeah, I, I like that. He has multiple. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, some some man, actors just try to nail one, one. style. Yeah, I'm going to stay in method acting, acting all the time. Yeah. Method yeah. acting. That's all I'm going to do. Stanislavski. Yes, it. Meisner. That's it. You better not come over here with that. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. But that's great. But like as he was explaining it, I started thinking like my psychology degree jumps yeah. in and I started thinking about the counseling therapy yes. methods. And they, they even said in psychology that the strongest yes. and best ones when you combine. That's right. So that's what it reminded that's me of. Right. It was just I love great. It. It, was it, awesome, it was awesome. great. It was great. It was he great. He did stay in that, that he one stayed, time. He stayed in that, that one, one time. That's just who he is. Yeah. Oh, you think he laughed? Did he laugh? He, he laughed a couple times. He laughed a couple times. <laughs> I didn't hear him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he laughed a couple times. That's just who he is. Because I laughed so loud, I guess I didn't hear him. You was over laughing him. That's was what that happened. really? Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Next time we have him come back on, we'll have him laugh first. And then I'll come behind him and laugh. He was, he was great, good. man. He was great. It was, it was, it was good. It was just, it's good. And sometimes, you know, it's kind of like remind me of like, you know, church. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes you just need that sermon that's just instructional. Mm-hmm. Like some people want the hoop and the highlight and yeah, the hype. Yeah, 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 that yeah. Sometimes yeah, you don't need yeah. all that. Sometimes you, you just need that. to learn. Sometimes you just need to listen. Sometimes yes. you just need the intake. Yes. He talked about that preparing for that character. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, you know, the type of character we were talking about was the murder and things like that. Right. But put that aside and, and focus in on the preparation. He read almost 10 pages of mm-hmm. backstory mm-hmm. on a character. And what did we learn in acting class? The work of the actors done where? At Out, home. Outside the cl- acting class. That's right. You know That's what I'm right. saying? That's right. That's great stuff, man. That's right. That's great and, stuff. And what, did, what was that nugget that he gave? He gave so many. Which one? <laughs> the one where he said, um, oh my goodness, I should have wrote it down. Mm-hmm. Man. Well, give me the gist of what, what he was the oh, point that he was Oh man, making. when he was saying something, I can't remember. Was I should have wrote it down. Yeah. Oh, there was man. just so many nuggets, he man. Gave and then, a lot, but it was one that really stuck out, and I didn't write it down. I should have wrote it. And see, I, and, and I'm gonna say this, and this, I don't want people to miss this because, and I like when we talk something about something about don't um don't be acting, right? Yeah, that's that was it. another. Nugget. That's it. Yeah, don't, don't get, get caught. caught See, acting. now somebody that's it. That's what it that's was. It. That's that was it. That's that was what powerful. It was. That's what it was. Now somebody listening to that, who's an actor, maybe more than more than more yeah, than likely they yeah, would be yeah, an yeah. inexperienced actor, yeah, yeah. would yeah. say, "Why did he say that? Yeah. That doesn't sound right." What you mean? Don't get caught acting. Don't get caught acting. Don't get caught acting. That's that's because what it act, is. Acting is not acting 
it's being the best believer of you yeah. and it's reacting. You're supposed to be bringing out that character. Right. That's what you're supposed to be Kinda doing. Kind of like, like, yeah. Not regurgitating those lines right. like we see some actors right, always right, doing right, trying right. to, you know, remember right. their line. Okay, you go, I go, you go, Like Like, li- go. like line tag. Yeah, your, your line, line tag. my line, your yeah. line, my line. And I've seen movies like that where it's yeah. like, take, and I'm not going to say any names because, you know, yeah, we're not here to... we've seen a lot like that. You know, we're not here we've to... We've seen a lot know, like that. Yeah. Yes. But that that was powerful, and and then I like that. And I'm gonna tell I like you that a lot. Yeah, that that was that was this powerful. I like that a lot. That was very powerful, and I, and I hope people don't miss that. Don't, don't get, get caught, caught acting. acting. That was powerful. Don't miss that. Don't miss that. And um, one of the other things he, he talked about that like stuck out, and resonated with me, was about taking care of yourself coming out of those tough mm-hmm. roles. Mm-hmm. You, we all as actors need to have a plan of when I'm playing that murderer. Or that rapist, rather, you know, if I choose to do it now, I, you know, what he said, hey, I kind of turned him down. Mm-hmm. I definitely understand that. And we got to have him back because I want to kind of ask him about Heath Ledger. I think he can kind of maybe comment oh, yeah, 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 to that yeah. having played a character that takes you deep. Yeah. Because there's some people that have. Yeah, they said Heath Ledger. He went he deep. He played the Joker. He went too deep. He was too yeah, deep. Yeah, he went too he deep. He was too deep. And I can't remember what guess we had. Well, let me finish that one that one thought. We have to have a plan on how to take care of ourselves because we become emotionally invested in that character. Yeah. So how am I going to take care of myself? What do I have in, uh, in place? Mm-hmm. We need to give that thought. Yeah. You know? Yeah, because or I, not take the role. Yeah, but I can't remember. Who, I think it was Tim Lenaboss. Remember, he talked about how some people's personalities are kind of they have that type of personality that 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 can be connected to mm-hmm, a character mm-hmm, that can go deep, mm-hmm. and sometimes it cannot be healthy. Yeah. So yeah, because didn't he say at one point that there was one character he didn't take? Yeah, he said he said he had to turn a few down as well. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. That's deep stuff. Good that's, stuff. That's man. Some good, I, I really enjoyed very good it. interview. Yeah, I really, I really enjoyed, enjoyed it. it. Don't get caught acting. Don't get caught acting. That's gonna, listen, actor. That's gonna be my slogan for the rest of the year. Don't, don't get, get caught, caught acting, acting. Actor. actor. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love yes. it. I love it. He get the bell again. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, Absolutely. yes. You that better make that character your own. Right. You better put take that character and put it in the now. And like I always say to actors, if you want to have a good description of what we're talking about, if it was happening in real life, how would you think of it? How would you act? Right, right, right. How would you be? How would you feel? Right. How would you cry on a spot? Would you be really scared? Right. Take that situation right. off of that paper and bring it into. The natural, bring right. it to life. Like this was happening, like right now. Like right, if right. the world, if, if you're in a film, like let's say a San Andreas, and and stuff is getting ready to come to an end with the water and different things like that. How would you feel? What's the look on your face? You seeing a darn tsunami coming towards you? Like what right. would you do? That's right. Put it, take that character off of the paper and put it into the natural. And you know what? I got. Another tip that I learned from talking to a director on set. So maybe you've never experienced a tsunami coming at you. Mm-hmm. You can do what Nick said. You can think, put yourself in the, the, the mode of thinking and feeling and behave as such. But those that may find that hard, and this is what a director told me. He taught he told me talk he told me about a word called substitution. Mm-hmm. So maybe you can't imagine a tsunami falling on you, but maybe you've had a bunk bed fall on you Mm -hmm. and you can substitute the emotions and feelings that you had when that bunk bed fell on you, when your bed collapsed Mm -hmm. and, and pretend that it's a tsunami. Listen, that helped me so much. man. I'm going to tell you right now, Uh my character as Lily Davis, if anybody knows Nikki, I don't play with no ghosts. Mm-hmm. I, I don't play with no no extraterrestrial whatever you want to call it that's not Nikki's thing mm-hmm. but in the film three days and I'm not going to give it away but in the film three days some of that was actually happening so uh yeah okay Lily Davis and Nikki Warren was the same I got you I got you. and that's another tip <laughs> That's, you know what, Nick? And that was going to lead me to my next point. I'm telling Sometimes you. Sometimes we can draw from our real selves yes. and real experiences that we've been in. Because I remember we were filming that movie. Uh, what was that movie in Baltimore that had Cuba Gooden Jr., Omar Gooding in it? 
uh, Clifton Powell was oh, in Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, we were Guns in and Grants. Guns and Grants. Yeah, we were filming that in Baltimore. And... We had to do the scene yeah, where the guy came with the gun. Yeah, uh, The guy from The Wire, yes. uh, Johnson. I, uh, I, I know you're talking you about. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. He came in with the gun, and the director, Larry Durr, uh, mm-hmm. Neil was, you know, directing, co-directing. Yes. And they told us, when he come in with the gun, don't say nothing. So I remember being over at King Sesson Playground, Southwest Philly, playing ball, and somebody come running out the half court with a gun. Mm-hmm. And that's what I was thinking. The whole time. Yes. And so even though he told us not to say nothing, you know I said, he got a gun! Listen. And we, <laughs> and can, tell you, we can tell you about this movie because it's out. It's out. Okay. Yeah. So going back to what Kev said, in that club, you got to take it and you got to put it into the natural. Yeah. And to show you how as natural as it was, we were in that club and we were dancing. Right. And you screamed, he, he got, got a gun. gun. <laughs> I took off like a bat out of hell and broke my shoes. And stilettos. Broke in stilettos right. and broke the heels off my shoes. Right. Because that right. is what actually would happen. Right, right. You trying to dodge out of the way. Right, right, so right. You don't want to get shot. Right, I right. didn't want to get shot. Right, so right, right. I darted and broke the heels off. Right. Not one, but both of my shoes. Right, right. And you know what? Did you notice that nobody spilled their drink? Nobody spilled. Uh, not no, not one person spilled because they was like, "All right, Curry, refill the drink." Nobody went over to the refill line because okay. nobody spilled their drink. Listen, like what is it about a drink that you could be running through a burning house and not spill a drink? Listen, like is it that is it that important? <laughs> I love those shoes too. I took them right to the shoe repair. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and, he, the, and the guy was like, "What happened?" I said, "I was acting." Can you fix this? He said, "Oh sure." Right, right, and right. And fix my <laughs> shoes. But yeah, that I broke the the heel popped right off my shoes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it was funny because the director said, now, that's some darn good acting. You there you go. Your shoes. There you go. For real. Right. But then, you know, we're sitting up here thinking like, we weren't acting. That We was kind of, we was reenacting listen, something that we had really lived. You know what I'm saying? someone come up in there with listen, a gun for real. Listen, what would you do? I'm getting out of the way. Now, listen. And I remember being down South Street. And we took some souvenirs from there, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We took yeah, some souvenirs. We got souvenirs from yeah, there. Yeah, we sure did. Got some uh uh, what is it? Uh, bullet, yeah. bullet shell case? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. I get souvenirs from every set I be on now. It ain't stealing. I'm just remembering. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just reflecting anyway. But yeah, I remember being down South Street, and uh, they had some major rap concert that was going on. And that, this was the last time I was ever down South Street with me, my brother, from my friends or whatever. And of course, somebody had to pull out a gun. Yeah, and they yelled. He about the shoe, and we all ran. And so, filming that scene, those were some of the things that was going through my mm-hmm, mind. You know mm-hmm, what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And uh, so, yeah, you can draw from substitution. You can draw from Stanislavski, Meisner, or whatever uh, technique, and combine them all. Listen, you can combine from, like Nick said, what, how would you think Phil would behave or believe? If you was in that actual situation. If that's right. You know what I'm saying? That's right. So, and yeah. acting is being the best possible, Be- believable, believable you. you. So actor, don't get caught acting, actor. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's going to be my slogan. That's it. We're going to run now. Don't get caught acting, <laughs> actor. <laughs> yeah. Don't get caught acting. I love it. I love it. Oh, I love man. It. Look, we can talk Ooh, about this all day, man. Yes. Anyway. All right. So we're going to take a break. And when we come back, it's going to be time for news mm-hmm. and sports. Skyler's professional editing firm consists of a specialized group of academic doctors, editors, and statisticians that keep doctoral candidates moving through the academic doctoral process by providing one-to-one group mentorship and all-inclusive editorial services that produce writing advancements that result in exponential movement. The scholars conduct line-by-line editing, proof and copy editing, university-specific format, compliance, and substantia done-for-you services on the following documents. Doctoral thesis, dissertations, capstone projects, research studies, research proposals, and oral defense preparations and presentations. The Scholars Professional Editing Group keep you moving. For information on editorial services, our doctoral accelerated mentorship program, visit www.thescholarsediting.com. That's www.thescholarsediting.com. Or contact Dr. Haynes at 281-315-6053. Yes. Yeah, that was good, man. Yes, yes. That was good stuff. Yes. That was some very good stuff. Mr. Mike Sutton, yes. a.k.a. The Professor. The Professor. That's it, man. 
He's he's yes. a, he's a really really yes. talented actor, man. Yes, and a consummate professional. Um, somebody you definitely want to work with. Like he's one of those guys in our area that when you see him on set, you know it's a good project. Mm-hmm. And I know when I first started out. And, you know, started out his background yeah. and then graduating, you know, slowly yeah. to speaking roles. Mm-hmm. When I would go on set and see certain people, I said, OK, this is a good production mm-hmm. because you see certain people. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think mm-hmm. every up and coming mm-hmm. actor does mm-hmm. that um, when you when you're first starting out. And even I don't think no matter how long you've been in it, when you see certain actors like you, you gauge it by them. Yes. You know, yes. you know, and yes. Mike is one of those guys you gauge, you, you gauge it by it. Yeah. Now, now he probably believe, would be humble and say, you know, nah, or, you know, I don't, I wouldn't think that, but he is. I mean, he's, he's an exceptional talent. Yeah, he is. Very, very, very exceptional, very talent. exceptional talent. Yeah. All right. So now it's time for news and sports. All right. And. But, Uh-oh, uh-oh, it's going to be good. It's right. going to be good. Now, listen, the NBA had its awards show, and the awards had been given out. And for those who uh, were not kept abreast on who won what awards for the NBA, we're going to lay it out for you. All right? So, this is the this all was sponsored by Kia. And Kia, you can send us a check if you like. We're not going to turn it down. <laughs> but anyway, this is the Kia NBA Most Valuable Player. It went to Giannis Antetokounmpo from the Milwaukee Bucks. And in the running was Paul George, Oklahoma City Thunder, James Harden, of course, from the Houston Rockets. Then there was the Rookie of the Year. The winner was Luka Dasevich of the Dallas Mavericks. DeAndre Ayton from the Phoenix Suns and Trey Young from the Atlanta Hawks was in the running. Then there was the NBA Six Man uh, Award, and it went to Sweet Lou Williams, the L.A. Clippers. This man has the highest average of a six man in NBA history, and the Sixers should have never let him go, in my opinion. But Montreal uh, Harold for the L.A. Clippers and um, DeMontis Sabonis uh, from the Indiana Pacers when they're running. Then there was the Defensive Player of the Year. The winner was Rudy Gobert from the Utah Jazz. Giannis uh, Antetokounmpo, the Greek freak, the Milwaukee Bucks was in the running. Paul George, Oklahoma City Thunder, mm-hmm. in the running as well. Mm-hmm. Then there was the most improved player. And the winner was Pascal C- Siakam, Toronto Raptors, the champion Toronto Raptors. I definitely totally agree with that. Uh, he really, really was a big part of helping them win that championship and stepped up big. Then there was De'Aaron Fox from Sacramento Kings and D'Angelo Russell, Brooklyn Nets, who came into his own uh, after being traded from the L.A. Lakers to the Brooklyn Nets. And then it was Coach of the Year, went to Mike Buddenhauser from the Milwaukee Bucks, uh, Michael Malone from the Denver Nuggets, and Doc Rivers, L.A. Clippers. And while I agree with all three of those, I felt like the head coach of the Toronto Raptors, who uh, should have been in the running at least at minimum, because it was his first year as the Toronto Raptors coach, and he won a championship, which is very, very Hard to do. Then it was the NBA Executive uh, Vote Award. NBA Executive of the Year went to John Horse, Milwaukee Bucks. Player Voted Awards. Mm-hmm. All right. There was the the Twyman Stokes Teammate of the Year Award went to Mike Conley from the Mrs., uh, Memphis Grizzly. Then it was the NBA Sportsmanship Award went to Mike Conley, Memphis Grizzly. So he won back-to-back awards. Then it was the Community Award. It went to the NBA Cares Community Assist Award went to Bradley Bill, Washington Wizards. Then the fan voted award mm-hmm. was the House and Highlights Moment of the Year with the Dad Rose, uh, Minnesota Timberwolves. Nice. Shout, shout out to nice. D. Rose, man, nice. who overcame a few season-ending end, injuries within the last uh, three to five years and came back and uh, was really, really doing his thing. And then the Special NBA Awards Honors Lifetime Achievement Award with the Larry Bird and Magic Johnson. And let me say this. They saved the NBA in the 80s going into the 90s. Mm-hmm. It had not been for Larry mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and Magic, the NBA wouldn't be what it is to this very, very day. And then there's the Sager Strong Award with the Robin Roberts, who overcome cancer. Nice. Okay. Nice. Yes. Nice. Yeah, she told a, a yeah, fabulous awesome te- story. Testimony. Yeah. Fabulous testimony she gave. Yeah. Absolutely. And then there was the Hustle Award with the Marcus Smart. Uh, Boston Celtics, and I would definitely agree with that. Mm-hmm. Mark, he just hustles all over, the, and he's not scared of nobody. That's right. He's only 6'3", 6'4", and he was going to fight 
Joel and B from the Sixers, who was seven foot two. So yeah, he get the hustle and courage award. Okay, you know? okay. And then there was the All NBA teams, All NBA first team with the Giannis Acuco, Milwaukee Bucks, James Harden, Houston Rockets, Stephen Curry, Golden State Warriors, Paul George, Oklahoma City Thunder, and then Nikolai Joe uh, Joe uh, Jokic, Denver Nuggets. I'm just kind of wondering why KD's not on that first list, but we'll keep it moving. NBA All Rookie Team. Uh, Luka Donick, Dallas Mavericks, Trey Young, Atlanta Hawks, DeAndre Ayton, Phoenix Suns, Jaron Jackson Jr., Memphis Grizzly, Marvin Bagley, uh, the third Sacramento Kings, and then the last but not least, the NBA All Defensive Team went to Rudy Gobert, Utah Jazz, Paul George, Oklahoma City Thunder, Giannis Antetokounmpo from Mil- Milwaukee Bucks, Marcus Smart, Boston Celtics, Eric Bledsoe, Milwaukee Bucks. And that is your nice, NBA nice, awards nice. for the 2019. They all get the bell. They all, <laughs> they all yeah. get the bell. Congratulations. And, listen, and other sports news, just a one line. I want to give a shout out to the U.S. women's soccer team oh, in the man. World Cup. They're kicking they butt. They are kicking they butt. Are taking names, honey. Oh, yes. And we'll be crossing yes. off other names coming to a soccer yes, field near yes, you. Yes, yes. Yeah, we're going to bring home the But women get the bell. <laughs> USA, baby. That's it. USA. 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 And USA. now in news, another sister got to get the bell. Shout out to my girl, Serena Williams. Woo! <laughs> Serena Williams became the second African American woman to appear where on the, the Wheaties box. box. The wow. first one was tennis player Althea Gibson. Serena is the second, and let me tell you, Serena was like, "I just want to say thank you to Althea." That's it. You know, she gave Althea Gibson shout outs, and now both of them ladies, yes, paving Serena the paving the way. Get the bell. <laughs> get the bell. Get the bell. Get the bell. And now let me let me tell you, let me tell you, if you did not watch, I don't know what was wrong with you. Listen, the Democrat presidential debate, Mm -hmm. man, that thing was hot like fire. Mm -hmm. The first half was on Wednesday. You had the first 10 and the second half was on Thursday. You had the second 10 both appeared on MSNBC and Telemundo at 9 p.m. And they debated Kev for two straight hours. Mm-hmm. But let me tell you, them candidates are on fire. They are on fire, fire, fire. The one to watch for me, mm-hmm. for me, from the first night, for me, Jillian Castro, mm-hmm. he's on fire. He he is straight on fire. He is on fire. Cory Booker completely shocked me because I didn't hear too much about Cory, but Cory was debating his behind off. And let me tell you, Julian and, and Cory answered every single question. They did not miss a beat. They came ready and prepared to take on all of them. I'm going to just be honest. From the first half, the women were not... um. The, the, the women were not giving it to me mm-hmm. a little bit, you know, and I'm all for the women, you know, shout out to all of the women who are running. They they were not giving it to me. My 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 eyes were on Cory Booker, um, Julian Castro and Jay Inslee. Jay was getting down. Mm-hmm. He they were getting down and then beat over to the second night, Thursday night. You have Kamala Harris. She came out guns hot. Mm-hmm. She came out guns hot. Then you got Joe Biden. He was doing his thing, and Bernie Sanders mm-hmm. laying it down. Bernie can hold it. Mm-hmm. He can now, you know, because they're always talking about Bernie's age and different things like that. Bernie can hold it. He can hold it. I see why a lot of people like Bernie Sanders. I see. But they, I they see. all liars, liars, liars. You <laughs> <laughs> they all say what you want to hear. Then they get in office, and you know and, what? And then drop, and then drop all that stuff they said. And let me tell on the you, sideline. I ain't buying it. And let me tell you, to your point, because right. they this time around, because I'm gonna tell you right now, this presidential election mm-hmm. is all about the young people. It's all about the black and brown votes. Mm-hmm. Okay, and everybody knows that if you're going to sit up in that White House, you got to pull them young people in and you got to pull in the black and brown. Mm-hmm. Okay, and to your point, they had a bunch of college students and the number one thing for college students was student loan debt. Mm-hmm. And the other thing that you said 
Are you going to actually do what you said you're going to do when you get in office? Because these young people, I'm telling you, the ones that are paying attention, they're tired of talking. Right. They are tired of the talking. They want some action. Yeah. And okay. That, and that's, that's the, I think that's everyone's struggle. Yeah. That, you know, they have these debates, which are great. Mm-hmm. And... Some uh, a lot of the politicians you don't even see them yeah. until election until time. Until election time, and they want to visit your church, yeah, and come around and shake everybody's hand. Yeah. Then once they get elected, you don't see them no more yes. until it's time to run again. Mm-hmm. And if they, if they don't run again, you never see them again. Yeah. And so I think what the American people want is someone that's going to put their money where their mouth is. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so you know. We know this characteristic of politicians to talk mm-hmm. out of both sides mm-hmm. of their mouth. Exactly. And it's kind of like life is getting harder. Things are getting worse. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. the American people, while we understand that, we want that less and less. Yeah. So we yeah. kind of we kind of want to go with the person that's yeah. kind of, you know, going to do it more times than not. Mm-hmm. Do mm-hmm. what they say mm-hmm. that they're going to do. Exactly. Because gun control was at the top of that yeah. list. And Cory Booker and Kamala talked at length about that and then they also were talking about the um gun control and they were also talking about what what was the other thing they were talking oh the borders Mm -hmm. the the problem that's going on with the borders remember i don't know if you guys been catching up but the let but the uh the man and his daughter who drowned trying to cross over right you know what i mean they talked at length about that and i'm gonna tell you right now elizabeth warren she said listen Everything, and she said exactly what you just said. Everything y'all saying sounds nice. Right. But y'all need to come up with a way or how y'all going to beat yeah. Trump. Well, yeah. She said, because right now, Trump didn't even think that he was going to make it into the White House, but he did. So right. now that he did, he's going to strategize to do it again. And she said, and what's going to be your strategy to beat that? Right. And I said, you know what? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because all we all know it ain't fair. It's not it's not fair. Mm-hmm. So you better come up with a way on how you gonna um beat this dude because um y'all gonna mess around and he gonna be right back up in there again because he's saying things that some people wanna hear. And what's that thing? Make America great again. Yeah. And he y'all got, talking he, he about has the, he has the accurate he has the the right slogan. Yeah. yeah he got the and right he slogan. will come up with another slogan that's going to grab people and they're going to say, you know what? Four more years for him. Mm-hmm. So if you don't want that, you got to come up with a way to get that to not happen. Yeah. And, 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 you know, fix it, mm-hmm. fix it, fix it. And one more thing, people, you got to be careful. There are predators stalking these dating sites. Y'all got to be. I don't like those dating sites. I don't even know why they have them things. I think them things are just horrible. You know, I'm not going to say no names. You know, I'm not going to name them, but I'm just saying y'all got to be careful with these dating sites. Another female has been attacked. You know, she met someone on a dating site and, you know, come on. You got listen, listen, what whatever happened. You know what? Never mind. Well, here, here's the thing. I mean, every, you know. Not it, 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 it goes farther than before you get to the dating site. Yeah. We as people know how to put our best foot forward. Mm-hmm. So on a dating site, of course, people are going to definitely That's, put their best yeah, foot forward yeah. where you can hide. That's right. You can hide behind a profile that probably doesn't look like you. Mm-hmm. You know, the person probably, you know, some people put false pictures up there. Yeah. Some people put, you know, a picture of them. 10 years younger, mm-hmm. you know, and things like that. So, you know, it, 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 the, the first thing is that element of, am I dealing with truth? Yeah. Now, even before you get to a dating site, just connecting with people every day, are you dealing with truth? That's When right. we as people have been conditioned and trained to put our best foot forward. Why? Mm-hmm. Because we want to be liked, we want to be accepted, we want to belong. Mm-hmm. One of the things I learned, and I'm still learning, is that we have a public self. Mm-hmm. That's what we want people to believe that's about right. us. That's and right. we have a private self. Yeah. You know, that's what people don't know about us. And, but there's, there's a level of being chained when your private self and public self are so far apart on a scale. Yeah. Because now you got a whole lot of pretending to do. Yeah. Cause you got to, you got to, you got your private self and the farther apart it is from your public self, you got to do some pretending to make up the gap. That's right. And so what, what I've learned is when you get tired of pretending 
and say, what you see is what you get. Mm -hmm, I'm like mm -hmm. Popeye. I am who I am. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Your private self starts moving closer to your public self. Yeah. So you start to become, you start to be who you are, yeah. whether you in public yeah. or private. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's like the, one of the, the goals of freedom of being the free, being, being free to be who you are. Mm -hmm. Cause the more I can mm -hmm. be authentic by my private self being close to my public self, I don't have to do that pretending gap gets smaller. Yeah. You see what I'm yeah. saying? And so you yeah. got a lot of people Then you got, you got factor in mental illness, mental illness. You got to factor in, you know, stuff like that. And it's like, and there are, I would say that there are some uh, positive testimonies of people who met their husband or right, their wife. Right, right, right. Those right. are few. That's a remnant. But like you said, we got to be careful. You got to be, be careful, careful here in person. Period. You got to be careful. Oh my! You better goodness. be like Sherlock Holmes. That's all I'm gonna say. Listen, I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to tell you because I see the same mistakes made over and over and over and over again, and you got to stop that. Yeah. You know, you got to stop that. And you know, and and you know, I I understand the concept of people looking for love. Uh, the, uh, you got some people that are, that are in love with the concept of love mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and, you know, that element of uh, escape that comes from chatting back and forth with the person who you've never met. And, you know, they, they, there's a level, a level of escape that comes with that. That's not real life. Mm -hmm, you understand mm -hmm, what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And people can get drawn in, sucked yeah, into yeah, that yeah, stuff, yeah. looking for escape from what their everyday painful life, or maybe just going to work and coming home yeah. and, and, and constantly meeting the person who keeps letting them down. And then you're meeting this person online. They call it catfishing. Yeah. Yeah. What, cat movie, what movie was that? That, that, that was, that was, uh, uh, what's the, what's the young lady, the comedian girl. Um, it was catfishing online. Um, the lady T Tika Sumter is in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know okay, what I'm talking about? Okay, okay. And it's talking okay. about the element of catfishing. Yeah. And, and it's a Tyler Perry movie. It's a Tyler Perry movie. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and, and it, kind of, it put it in a comedic way, but it brings out that real element of, you know, we got to be careful yeah, with this, man. Yeah, Tika, Tika's Tika character Sumter. Yeah. had been catfished yeah, yeah. By, uh, by somebody. Right, right. Yeah. And her sister was the comedy, Um, I should know her name. Oh my um, goodness! Um, oh my goodness! Well, well, it'll come to us. You know what we talking about? Uh, she played in Kevin Hart Night School. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just it's slipping my mind, but and she's she's a list famous, so we should know her name. But you know what you know what I'm saying. So we got to be careful with this. And you know, last thing I say is our pain can be a springboard into falling prey to this yes, stuff. Yes, it is. That's, that is correct. Our pain. 100%. Because if you got low self-esteem, yeah. if you got this man whispering sweet nothing, typing yeah, sweet yeah, nothing, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know, your pain you fall prey to can that. fall prey to that. Yeah. And that's why, that's what Kevin's Corner is about. That's what What's Bothering Nikki's about. It's about building a consciousness yeah. in you about you. That's right. You know what I'm listen, saying? Listen, listen. Fix it before yeah. you start getting on these sites and letting all kinds of demons up in your house. Yeah. Come on, y'all better be careful. And it goes for the men too. Yeah, that's right. Because there's some crazy females out here. Yep. It's some crazy women out here, brothers. I'm trying to tell you. And y'all be sitting there looking at it like, what in the world is going on? Fix yourself before you mess around and um, yeah. Yeah, man. get caught up in the wrong situation and you can't get out of it. We've seen that too many times yeah. too. So come on. Fix yourself. Fix right. yourself. Self healing therapy. Therapy is okay to yeah. say um, you need therapy. That's it's right. okay. It is That's okay. Right. Fix it. That's it. That's it. That's all I got. News. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. So right. Right. We're gonna take, we gonna a, take break. a break. And mm -hmm. we come back. It's gonna be time for my favorite part of the show. We're gonna find out what's bothering Nikki. It's the Kevin and Nikki show on iHeartRadio. We'll be right back. <laughs>
Yes, all right, all private right. eye. All right. They're watching you. All right. Now, you know I got to make a comment on this. <laughs> you know I got to make a comment on it because I pay attention. <laughs> Just reported in the news about people stalking people on dating sites and then go play private island. That's <laughs> right. That's right. Y'all but, better be careful. But you know what? That was a you know what, Nick? I will say this. You play some you play timely songs yes. that fit the stuff that's going Y'all on. Y'all better be careful. They, they pri- watching so I'm saying here, why is it private I'm watching you? And they then, see and you then, every, every move. And then at the end he says, girl, I'm watching you. Yeah, I, listen, I got my eyes on you. That's right. <laughs> I'm listen, like, I'm, I'm trying to tell you. This is how this is that how was a, big. That, that was a warning song. Yeah. yeah that's Listen, it. y'all. That's a warning song right there. Yeah. That's why I played it because that's how I be. They be right, watching yeah, you. They do. Y'all better be careful. Watching I'm your every move. Oh, Private eye. Yeah. They're watching you. Private <laughs> eye. We're watching you, watching you, watching you. <laughs> Listen, I'm, I'm trying to tell you that's that is exactly why I put that song in cue because that's how it is for real. That's true. That's true. That that's how true. it is for real. They people be watching you, so you got to make sure you pay attention and watch and take care of yourself. Yeah. You, listen, you ain't got to be friends with with listen. You do not have to be friends with everybody. everybody. Yeah. You do not have to. And this is leading into. Go ahead. Do my thing. All right. So now it's time for my favorite part of the show. You, you, you just got the prequel to What's Bothering Nick Lee. So now we're going to get the sequel. What's bothering you? Listen, you do not have to be friends with everybody. So stop thinking that you do. Mm-hmm. You do not have to have everybody in your circle. Stop thinking that you do. The less friends you have, the better. The less people in your circle, the better. The more careful you are. I mean, listen, I know everybody want to have a man. They want to have a woman. I, I I understand that, you know, the loneliness thing is, is going on. But you got to listen. You have got to be careful who you allow in your face and in your personal space. Mm-hmm. You got to be careful. The, the problem is we are not doing our homework. The rule is when you go to a job, before this job hires you, what do they do, Kev? They put you on a 90-day probation. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about this before. They put you on a 90-day probationary period because they want to make sure that you work out with the company. Mm -hmm. So after the end of your 90 days, you get evaluated. And if you did not meet the requirements for the position, you are let go. And if you did, then you are kept on. Why is it that when we meet somebody, we do not automatically put this person on the 90-day probationary period? The first thing we do is we want to go to bed with them. Mm -hmm. You know, we got them all up in our house around our children. We talked about that a few weeks ago, Mm -hmm. you know. We got them all. Remember Malia Davis. Yeah. You know, if if we are doing our due diligence to ourselves, to ourselves, not to the person, but to ourselves and checking out the background, checking out their friends and who they hang with doing doing the homework. We're in trouble. Yeah, we're in trouble. I mean, it's, it's just sad that we in a day and age where you have you have to be investigative. Um, you have probably to be now more than more than ever than in the past because you don't know who it's a, you, it's, it's a lot of mess out here. You don't know who you're letting up in your house. Mm-hmm. You have to do your background checks. You have to because that is a due diligence to you. Yeah, it's a lot of and, lot and of, you yeah. say it all the time. You gotta watch how he act when he lose a game. Yeah. I did not, you know yeah, that thing yeah, you be yeah, doing. Yeah, Come on, yeah. play board. I keep play board people, games. Play board games because if, if that person is a sore loser in a board game, they'll be a sore loser in real life. It's imperative that you learn as much about a person mm-hmm. as you can. And sometimes you can really learn a lot by playing games, and, and I make fun of it, but it really is it's yeah. really true in psychology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That by playing board games, you can learn a lot about a person. Can they yeah. handle losing? Yeah. Can they handle rejection? Yeah. How do they handle winning? How do they handle losing? How do they handle adversity? Yeah. You know, we yeah. need to find these things out because you know we can find ourselves in some situations that you know you didn't bargain for and ever didn't think ever didn't think you'd be in. 
and uh, that can cause, you know, hurt, harm, danger. Man. And in a lot of cases that we read on the news. Yeah. Death, even. Yes. Even even death. You have you have to be careful. You know, it's not like how it was back in the day when people show, some people show their true selves. Yeah. The it's We are in the 20th century. These these people are not showing their true selves. Yeah, it's a lot of. They are not showing their yeah. true selves at all. It's a lot of fakers around here. And and their their picture says one thing, but they are another. And sometimes the picture is not even theirs. Right, right, right. Some the, the sometimes that they can throw up a, a a picture of how they looked twenty years ago, or and some, they don't or, even look like that. Or now. I, I saw a story on Doctor Phil where it where the guy put up a picture of somebody else. Yeah. So it's all kinds, and was just like raking this Cat lady uh, for for like hundreds of thousands of dollars. You know. Yeah. And uh, it's just really really sad, man. You know, you have a lot of people. Who are like gullible and easy to be manipulated, and but there's a lot of mental illness out here. A lot, a lot of sociopathic yeah, yeah, people yeah, yeah. that know how to. They know the language. They know the jargon. They know the behavior, and yeah. they know how to once again put their best foot yeah. forward and deceive you. And then when you find yourself in a situation where you're trapped, you know, and ask questions. It'd be too, it'd be too late. Listen, ask questions. If he don't want to answer certain questions, then guess what? Red flag. Mm-hmm. If she don't want to answer certain questions, red flag. If they say, "Listen, is is you know why we gotta ask all these questions?" When they when they get to that point, okay, we're, yeah, we're done. Because like we're do, done. Like Dr. The, date is, the date is over. Because like Doctor Phil said, those that have nothing to hide hide nothing. That's right. And you know, I don't think you need to talk about everything on the first date or whatever like that. But there are some questions that. It's okay to ask, mm-hmm, you know. Mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. you need to know they have a a, a jail history. Or, that's right. You know, had they ever, you know, have you ever murdered somebody? You know, that, that might right. be an appropriate question on the first that's date. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Have you ever stabbed somebody? Yeah, you know, I mean, you 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 wanna you wanna know that you yeah. wanna know that, and um, I'm 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 telling you right now, uh, our friend to the show and guest that we had, Timothy Tobias, mm-hmm. um, he is in for my man, and mm-hmm. he did post. The um the clip yeah. that he was in, okay. and um we're gonna share that you know on our show. But he was in this episode where this girl met this dude, and she didn't even know who the dude was, right, right? Cause she didn't even research his his backstory and different things like that. And now here she is doing a crime for him, right, right, right. You know, doing a doing a murder for him. I mean, come on, you got listen. Come on now, yeah. Do do your homework. You gotta be careful. Do your do your homework. You gotta be more careful. Do your homework. That's it. That's all I got. That's all it. Right. That's it. That That's was, it. That was enough. That's it. Yeah, yeah, that was enough, man. That's mm-hmm. it. All right. So we're going to take another break. And when we come back, it's going to be time for my favorite part of the show. Kevin's Corner. When we come back, it's the Kevin and Nikki Show on our radio. We're everywhere. And we'll be back. I'm so hard here at first. My grandma didn't even believe in me. I kept going though. All I can say is I told you. Jewelry at the bank now in the vault. You should have never doubted me. I'ma work to my last breath. I'ma hustle to my last breath. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you should've never doubted me. The pain and the struggle followed me. My daddy never been that bothered me. And these car streets made a man of me. No time it'll come, they doubt me. Had to keep them OGs round me. Keep a young, young homie grounded. You never know where your motivation to come from. We do the most with these bras and pop shots. They try to push you beside, you gotta fight some. I had a land on the side and now we back guys. I want that number on my spot, I'm like icon. I got that beast in my eyes, I'm like Tyson. With my heart and my drive, I know I'm righteous. He's on ice and me, raggy, raggy like that boy. Watch you win, 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 you gon' want more. Set a tree and tree and tree and need an encore. I was down on my last when I found myself. I be a fighter to the end to my last round. I got angels all around me, yeah, yeah. I got love all around me, yeah, yeah. I be a fighter to the end to my last round. I'm a hustle to my last round. I got angels all around me, yeah, yeah. I got love all around me, yeah, yeah. I be a fighter to the end to my last round. I'm a hustle to my last round. I came from the water, water. Everybody in my gang, gonna. 
in front For real, you must want a gang war I got old girl in the transport Trappin' is a habit, I got Zans on me I'm riding in the flame, keep the fan on me Just keep whipping the Hussein with them bands on me I'ma kill the competition and I'm playing for keep You see water dripping off me in kitchen I turn nothing into something now I'm living You neglected me, you know you shouldn't have did that They was coming out, you know you shouldn't have did that You didn't reckon I might drive, shouldn't have did that Now I find every day I won't get it back I just wanna be the child for the misfits And the one that was saying I couldn't do it. I got angels all around me, yeah, yeah I got love all around me, yeah, yeah I'd be a fighter to the end, to my last breath I'm a hustle to my last breath I got angels all around me, yeah, yeah I got love all around me, yeah, yeah I need a fighter to the end, to my last breath I'm a hustle to my last breath Who knew I would take it to a whole nother level? Who knew I would race it with a whole nother rebel? Shout out one checking for me, mama one checking for me I hustle every day just so I can spend a check on you my dog to the end, I got so much respect for you. I watch you give up on me, but I never lost faith, did I? You didn't ever hold me down, and I bought a new safe tonight. Paper plates flushing in the race tonight. I'm built with a new reputation. Blood, sweat, and tears in my new foundation. Up on my, my main line, like a running nation. I got angels all around me, yeah, yeah. I got love all around me, yeah, yeah. I'm a hustle to my last And that tears in my eyes My dreams all I got and now I die for it If I love it with a passion, I'm gonna ride for it You're listening to the Kevin and Nikki show on iHeartRadio Alright, I like that Yeah, that's it I love it, I love that That's it Yes Creed 1 I love that. No, no, Creed. Was it Creed 2? Creed, Creed 1. Creed 1. Creed 1? Yeah, Creed 1. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Inspirational. Yeah. That was very you, you inspirational. Can't, you can't listen to some Rocky music and not be inspired. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, it's hard. You, you not, you, I, I remember uh, we went to see, was it Creed 2? Mm-hmm. And, of course, Creed gets knocked down. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, and then I, I think I heard my brother say, Man, play that damn rocking music or something. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how you know. We were like, yeah. Yes. It's funny, man. Yeah, it was great. Yes. All right. Yeah. 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 All right. You ready? That's it. So now it's time for my favorite part of the show. Kevin's Corner. All right. So we're going to keep this high vibration train moving. Yes. <laughs> Yes. And we're going to look at two more characteristics of how you know you're operating or living on a high vibration in life. And you heard the song. It was about fighting to your last breath, which brings us to number 23 and 24. Mm-hmm. Yep, we're up to 23 and 24. So wow. We're going to keep it going. We are up to 23 and 24. That's it. Man, yep. so, I love this. That's right. So the first characteristic, number 23 of this week, is you never quit. That's right. So what never does never giving up really mean? It means believing in yourself. It means willingness to accept failure so you can learn the critical skill of adaptation. It means not compromising on your most important values and walking the walk rather than just talking the talk. Uh, even though you're faced with adversity, you don't give up, which brings us to uh, number 24, which is similar in nature. You're a fighter. Mm-hmm. Okay. If you describe someone as a fighter, you approve of them because they continue trying to achieve things in spite of great difficulties or opposition. Mm-hmm. They continue in a course of action, even in the face of difficulty or with little or no prospect of success in sight physically, but they keep going because the prospect of success is in sight futuristically right now visually in other words it's not there physically but they can see it in their mind's eye so therefore they do number one they never quit and Mm -hmm. then do number two they keep fighting so in other words it hasn't appeared yet but it's on its way so we keep going because we know that i'm going to meet up with it 
And it doesn't mean we don't feel like giving up. It doesn't mean that we don't get tired sometimes in life. But when we do, it is a quiet stream on the inside that shows up that motivates us to run on a little while longer. Wow. That's Beautiful. It. That's yes. all I got. That's awesome. That's it. I'm telling you, this series is hot like fire. That's it. It is hot like fire. And I pray that everyone is getting something out of it because I know I am. Yeah. I know I am. I, am. Yeah. I know I am. I know I am. And I look forward to seeing the post every week. Yeah. Every week. Awesome. Yep. That's it. All right. All right. So. Put it out there. All right. Put you know what? You know what? Before you put it out there. Uh-huh. I, I, y'all should have seen uh, Kevin's face when I started talking about the presidential candidates. Yeah. I saw him. His I face was right like. My, I just. My face just sunk. <laughs> He wasn't excited. His face was like, mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm not trying okay, to Okay, we ain't even going to comment on that mm-hmm. until I want to see what they do when they get off. Because of everybody right, said right, what they right. going to do. And then when they get up in there, the story completely changed. And his face showed all of that. Yeah, because we've heard it before, you know. I'm telling you, these are some of the things that you guys are going to see when we go live. Right, okay, right, right. Well, y'all, y'all going to see him soaking his chair. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard it all before. All right. Yeah. Put it out there. All right, guys. So once again, thank you from the top, middle, and bottom of our hearts for tuning in each week and following us and our journey. We do what we do for you, and we can't do what we do without you. You guys are our motivation and inspiration. Yes. And um, as long as y'all keep tuning in, we're gonna keep bringing y'all hot shows, hot guests, hot music, you know, hot topics. News and sports, what's bothering Nikki, Kevin's Corners, and the many adventures of Trevor and Yes, Nicky. yes, yes, yes. So don't forget, mark your calendars, guys, for the Philadelphia Podcasting Society presents the 7th Annual Philadelphia Podcast Festival. We will be broadcasting live at the Colonial Penn Life Insurance Building, 3rd Floor, Indy Hall, Room 360-399, Market Street, Downtown Philadelphia, PA 19181, on Saturday, July 20, 2019, at 1 o'clock Eastern Time. Our live um, in-studio guests will be Nakia Dillard, actor, multi-award winning actor, mm-hmm. entrepreneur from HBO, The Wire, Creed 1, Jason's Letter, Split, and CW's Black Light. And then mm-hmm. we will have some special guests that's going to be stopping through. Some of the guests going to be people who have been on the show who we're going to give a shout out to. And, uh, bro, what did we do? Did we, oh, we didn't say, we, we didn't say we're going to say, right? We let them know. Yeah, we said, we said that we were going to put the post up first. Right, we'll put and the post then, up first. And then let them know. And, uh, so be on the lookout for that post. And, uh, so I'm going to put it out there. I'm actor Kevin D. Benton. You can follow me on Facebook, on Twitter, at Kevin D. Benton. Then on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Uh, follow me at actor Kevin D. Benton and actress Nikki Warren on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. We're forever putting up short film, feature film, clips, things of the sort that you might enjoy. And, uh, hey, subscribe, you know, subscribe to us. We'll subscribe back, follow us, follow back. Make sure you got a profile up That's there right. You know that's right. That's right. Can't be posing as someone else, Mr. T and somebody. And <laughs> Barbara Streisand and all these people. Yes. People think we're going to accept that. You know, come on, y'all. Yes. Come, come on. on. We, be- come we better on. than that. You know. Come on, man. Come on, man. Yes. That's all I got. Yes. I'm actress Nikki Ward. You can find me on Facebook, on Twitter, at Nikki the Warren, and on the gram. Hello, I'm Nikki. That's spelled H-E-L-L-O-I-M-N-I-K-E-E. You have any questions, comments, concerns regarding our show? Yeah. Hit us up, the Kevin Nikki Show at Yahoo.com. You have any questions, comments, concerns for our special guest? Mike Sutton, the professor. Yes. Uh. Hit us up, Kevin Nikki Show at Yahoo.com. We'll read it to him and read it on the air. And like we always say, who knows your letter can be featured on our show? Mm-hmm. You can find our show on Facebook, the Kevin Nikki Show, on Twitter at Kevin Nikki Show, and on the gram, the Kevin and Nikki Show. Listen, go to IMDb, check out our IMDb page, yes, check sir. out every single celebrity guest that we've had on our show. I'm telling you, it's high life fire. Uh, I'm telling yeah, you right now, high. it is just awesome. And shout out to Kev. Kev, you get the bell. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Listen, Kev has been working tirelessly. <laughs> I got it. You got it. On our IMDb page, he has been working tirelessly on our Facebook page. All, all, all of the posts that you see going up, all of our flyers that you see going up, is your boy right here. Yeah. Right here, yeah. right here, right yeah. here, right yeah. here, right here. Yeah. And, I mean, listen, y'all guys don't understand. Uh, you know, unless you do radio, 
uh, how much work goes into this, yes. but it's so worth it when you're doing what you love, what you have passion for, mm-hmm. and you're doing it for the people who tune in. Mm-hmm. And uh, I will tell you right now, Nikki spends countless hours Aww. editing the show, editing the show to make sure it flows. She listens to it over five times yes. and cuts this and cuts that and makes sure everything is, is synchronized. And, and, and sometimes she's up two, three in the morning working hard and working hard for you. And uh, listen, but we enjoy it. You know, we, we sure enjoy you working do. hard. It, it takes hours and hard. hours of work, but it's, it is enjoyable work because we are working for doing something that we love and working for ourselves. Yes. That, that love it, love it, love it. I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. And please do not forget July 20th. It is going down yeah. at 1 o'clock p.m. Come on out. Stop celebrate it. with us at the Colonial Pen Building. Listen, come on through. Holler at your boy. Holler at your girl. And uh, come on, dance on with us and see how we cut up here That's in the it. studio. And see Kevin soak in his chair when we talk about the presidential candidate. No, no. Because, <laughs> you know, I... I I, I saw in my chair. You talk about the church, the church, and politics. <laughs> listen, you want to see him? Listen, y'all know how a, a, a turtle when a turtle sticks his head all the way out when he's excited, and then when he get a little something, he go back into his shell. Watch Kevin head just soak right down when he don't want to talk about the church, the church or politics. Oh, oh yeah. it's a, I'm telling you, it's the funniest thing ever. It's yeah, the funniest it's- thing ever. Come on out. tough topics. You're going to see all of that when you come out and and celebrate with us. And then we got something going on afterwards. We're going to let y'all know about that. It's going to be a free after party event going on. And we're going to have some things set up. Yes. for y'all, man. Y'all going to really enjoy it. Y'all going to really want to come out and meet our special guests. And we're going to have some celebrity guests stop through. Yes. Y'all going to really want to meet them. Y'all going to have them. We'll we'll let you know who it is when we put the flyers up. Yes. It's it's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right. Listen, we have had a ball with y'all this week, okay? Mm-hmm. We have had a ball with y'all today, yeah. but guess what? As we, we do every week. Too. As we do every week, yeah. but guess what? We got to we go. We got to go. So it's the Kevin and Nikki Show on iHeartRadio. We're everywhere, and we are out of here. here. Peace.
You have been listening to the Kevin and Nikki show on iHeartRadio.